Hi guys and welcome to another episode of the Boxing Coalition. My name is Cam. Joining me tonight so far I've only got Nayota. How you doing Nayota? I'm doing fairly well man. A little under the weather but still on it. Hope you feel better soon. But um, before we start I just gotta say um we unfortunately gotta start the pot off on a sad note. Twenty five year old Scottish boxer Mike Tal pass- sadly passed away on Friday. After he suffered severe brain injuries during a fight with Dale Evans the night before, our sincere condolences go out to his family and friends, and may you rest in peace. Yeah, definitely. And it's a very troublesome thing to to happen. You know, we get a few of these a year, and it's unfor- it's an unfortunate side effect of the sport. But you know, rest in peace to the man. Definitely. All right, Naota, you're not well, but let's uh, get through the boxing. Um, quiet weekend i mentioned it a few weeks ago that october internationally is quite quiet it's just a few um uk cards are quite going on and obviously this one's linked with the uk cleverly with hearn and bramer with sourlands in germany and um, i know you're a boxing fiend so what do you think of the fight i mean it was it was pretty solid it was it was looking like it was going to heat up going into you know the later rounds and everything but it, i guess bramer had his little elbow injury or whatever i mean the thing is it's it sucks to to see a guy go out like that when it looks like he could have really brought more but i don't know i guess it just shows like how dispassionate some of these fighters are when they kind of it seems like get everything handed to them but i mean for the first six rounds um it was pretty good back and forth action um pretty evenly matched fight I had it uh, even going into that seventh round, you know, if it would have started. But, you know, apparently I guess he messed his elbow up in the midst of um, that little bit of a firefight that there was. You know, it wasn't necessarily the most uh, technically brilliant stuff, but there was a lot of um, uh, a lot of just, you know, good, fast-paced action from, from both fighters. And, I mean, cleverly managed to pull it off. Um, I felt like there, were the, there was a possibility that he could do it, but I wasn't. I was a little bit iffy on how the scorecards would be with regards to you know fighting in Germany and you know how notorious they are with regards to um, bad scoring. But he managed to stop his man and get catch himself a belt, and now he's apparently going to be the mandatory for whenever the WBA decides to order that um, that Mando for a uh, Kovalev eleven Ward, whoever wins that fight. So he put himself in excellent position. Excellent position to get. Murdered by Kovalev for the second time. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he'll get well paid for the uh, for the prospect of it. Yeah, you know, I had it the same. I had three all going into the into the seventh, but seventh didn't start. Um, I could see, you know, like four two and even like maybe five one because the Sky commentary. I don't know what commentary you saw. They were very heavily on Bremer's side saying he was doing a lot more the the cleaner punches a lot more heavy-handed punches yeah. and I could see that I just thought you know Cleverly's work rate even though a lot of his punches were sl- tip taps sl- arm punches a bit of slapping going on and um, it was fun to watch technically it was it wasn't the greatest um fight I, th- I thought Bremer was using the backhand very well um catching it with clean um straight shots and hooks but I don't know, I kind of want to call bullshit on the injury, man, because I watched it again today, and even, you know, in, in the sixth round, and in between, like, the fifth and the sixth, like, he was never really shown any, didn't talk to his corner about his arm injury, and there was a point just at the end of the sixth round where ref called break for him to go, for Bremer to go to his corner and just get his um, glove taped up a bit. And he wasn't showing any distress about his elbow or nothing. So I just found it very strange. I don't know if he thought, well, I'm gassing here. I don't want to get stopped in front of my uh, hometown crowd, whatever. And, yeah, I'll just kind of pretend I've got an injury. I, just, I don't like when people lie on that, but that's just the... the what yeah, I, he what, didn't He didn't really show much of an um, indication of that, except for, I guess, like his work rate kind of dropped in, the, in that sixth round. Yeah, that's but, the only I mean, thing I could say. Yeah, but yeah, he really didn't show any kind of indication. I mean, like even when the, he put the ice on his elbow and he was moving around and stuff, like he didn't he didn't look like he was in like any extreme pain or anything. Like he broke it or something. It looked very tactical so to me, thinking, "Well, I've got the rematch clause. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll I'll take the L here and I'll I'll come back." Yeah, yeah, possibly. It's weird, but I mean, that's what happens when you get you know, like I said before, kind of spoiled by um, you know being the A side and the the on the promoters ticket and all that stuff so 
Could very well be. Yep. KH who jumped on the line, he's uh, always got one eye on the light heavyweight division. What's happening, Kev? My one eyed monster, what? <laughs> 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 Brain of us is cleverly, Kev, what are your thoughts? Uh very unimpressed, man. Uh pretty sloppy and I don't know for for that quote unquote top ten guys or world champions level was very underwhelming. I guess you guys would probably all agree on that, right? It was. I I thought it was still good to watch, but it was sloppy, man. For two top. Well, I mean, guys. you could tell. You could tell it's two kind of like fringe contender level guys. I mean, you, you, there's definitely better light heavyweights out there that don't even necessarily have a belt or haven't ever had a belt. So I, I don't mean, have I would definitely pick a few yet. guys. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, they, and like you said, Cam, these are two guys that. You know, my boy was in negotiations with both of them, and it, and it fell apart at the end, and then they ended up fighting each other. So I pretty much hate both of them. <laughs> so I could tell, basically fuck them off in, the, in my mind. But it looked like Bramer did kind of quit, man. It looked like he checked out. And he, uh, I don't know. It, 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 that's what it seemed like to me. And Cleverly, I, I actually do like Cleverly. I don't think he's that good, but I, I like Cleverly. I like his work rate, and I like his, his style, even though he's, kind of slapping at, at points but like the from far fight was a fun fight f- for me and uh this fight i think i think the right man won i think he wins in a rematch as well so uh i just don't think they should have a rematch and for i heard he's basically the mandatory for the winner of kovalev ward if if they choose to go that route if they choose to press it so it's interesting to see what's next but i think bramer who's been Hiding that belt hostage, I think we have a little insight into as to why. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, I guess with Bramer, there was a little intrigue or a little mystery about him. And, like, oh, he went to jail, and that's why he has visa issues. But suppose he went to jail for, like, hitting a woman, not really for, like, being, like, some thug or some shit like that. So it's just, like, I, I don't know. I I don't know. It, he very underwhelming, and it looked like he quit to me. And, like I said, I'm, I am probably a little bitter because I went to – the negotiations with both of them with my boy and they fell apart. So I think these are like two French type guys that he could actually have beat too. So that's even more so than uh, <laughs> why I was hoping he'd fight him. But uh, as for the fight itself, I think cleverly, if you put cleverly in the right matchups, he'll, he'll, he'll generally have fun fights. So I'm happy that he won because moving forward, I'd rather watch him than Bramer. Especially with Bramer's age as well. He's just almost hitting yeah. 40. But I'm I think that's your... what it is. He got old. He, I think he got actually older as the fight progressed. <laughs> and, and you know what I mean? It was one of those things where you get old overnight. Like he all was... of a sudden, it just isn't working. He was 38 at the sound of the bell, and on the end of the sixth, he was 42. He was 40. Yeah, he was done. And that's. I, I think that's what it was. And th- I think there is some credence to what you're saying. That I don't think he wanted to get stopped, so he took that way out. I'm not saying that he wasn't injured, but. I'm sure he could have fought through it, it seems, but we don't know because we're not in there. But it it looks like he could have just checked out, in my opinion. And no, he didn't I, look good the whole fight. Yeah, I totally agree. But I, and going on Kevly, it Kevly is a lot more fun to watch, but he's, his his defense is horrible, man. He's, he, he, after he, he throws... He don't have one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, his his chin is his his his, his defense basically. That like. he, yeah. he just he just ships so many punches. That after he throws, his hands don't come back up. He just catches so many shots. And well, that he, was his defense. He he hurt Bramer's uh, arm with his chin. He yep. Just, <laughs> tactics. Let Bramer hit him until he got hurt. Exactly. Tactics. Yeah. But yeah, I, I again agree with you. I think going on forward, I prefer to see Cleverly. I've always had a soft spot for Cleverly for some reason. I don't know why. Like I could. Like you said, he isn't that good, but he's he's fun to watch. That that from Faro fight I thought was excellent, and he's had a few decent fights back in the UK as well, man. So I'd rather see even him in Kovalev, fights than see. Even when Kovalov beat the shit out of him, like he came to get it. Yeah, he, he tried. He wasn't running. running. He, yeah. yeah, exactly. He wasn't yeah. running around the ring trying to avoid him. He was he was in the pocket trying to exchange. Obviously, he was doing it with the wrong guy. But um, yeah, as to what's next. Kev the saying there's a rematch clause, so if if Bremer wants to exercise it, then even the winner of Kovalev versus Ward won't be next. And if he wants to exercise that, he said that he's looking at maybe February, March for the rematch. So, all uh, right, yeah, I have no interest in watching the rematch. But if if he you know tries to pull it, 
Cleverly has no choice. He's got to fight. He's got to honor it. You know. Yeah. And, 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 even and, and the that, rematch has to be in Germany as well, correct? I'm not sure about the exact um, specifics in the in, in the clause, but I'd prefer it to be in the UK, to be honest. Even though that the, the crowd did seem quite decent side for a German um, f- uh, fight. Uh, th- I could see, you know, if you put, even though Hearn's relationship with Selby isn't that great these days, put Selby on the undercard at the Millennium Stadium and Cleverly versus Bremer, I think that would do decent figures. Yeah. So. Yeah, and with Sky's money, uh, you figure whoever UK money over there, you figure they have that little bit of leverage. Whereas, I do know, like, if if it was like with Sean's negotiation, he basically said if if he won, he wanted to have the rematch in New York, and Bramer said, "Nah, the first one's here, and the rematch is here." And I'm sure that's what he tried to do with Cleverly too, but I don't know if Cleverly it, had enough leverage it, to get around that. No, he probably hasn't. He probably didn't have the leverage, and the rematch would probably take place in Germany. But with I think Cleverly's confidence would going into the rematch. I don't think he'd have issues because you think I'll just do the same shit again and I'll be able to break him down. And I'll be able to get move on, get rid of him, get another payday, and move on. Yeah, and even then, like with the power of Hearn, I could see Cleverly getting a little intimate and fight after the Bremer rematch if he wins it before he fights either Ward or Kovalev, just because Eddie's going to milk that belt before he, he goes in with someone that's half decent. It's not like they haven't done it before, right? Exactly. <laughs> they, we, they know how to do it. Holding hell, uh, belts hostage. That's, that's, no that, doubt. That's what we do in the UK. But Neil Tukev, have you got anything else you want to say? And if, if Leon or anyone else jumps on in a bit, we can come back to this fight, but I'm pretty much done on it, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just a belt that's there for the picking, so whenever uh, they get done with this whole rematch situation. But I think Cleverly went, wins again. I think he was coming on, and I think um, a second fight, he'll probably be more dominant even, especially if it's in the U.K. It's going to be like the low-hanging fruit, the way like when Paulie gets a belt, everybody calls out Paulie and wants to fight Paulie. Yeah. Like that's, that's what Cleverly is going to be right now. Yeah. Yeah, Lim's boy, uh, Dimitri Bivol, is uh, right there at number one, so... Bivol and then, oh boy, Godsick, all those yeah, guys. Shabransky, all those yeah. there, yep. So if she fights Bivol in the UK, Lim's coming over. And if you fight, <laughs> if, you, if you fight Shawnee in the UK, Kev's coming over. So the coalition yeah. meetup definitely happening at Nando's. Without a doubt. I bet, I, Kev, I better be careful taking you to Nando's, man. You might put a bit more weight on. Oh, shit. I'm no stranger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right, undercard wise, uh, UK Sky Sports did show some of the undercard. I know um, Heron had O'Hara Davis on the undercard, but it wasn't really much of an opponent. So I've got nothing to say. I know Rhino Lindeberg was on there, uh, lost a split decision, but yeah, I've got nothing to say unless you guys want to mention anything. No, nothing for, for the rest of the card. Yeah, me neither. All right, let's talk about New Zealand, talk about Joseph Parker. Sponsored by Burger King, man. What a sponsor to have as a professional sponsor. <laughs> Definitely. But, um... It reminds me of uh, Fight Night um, Round 4, I think it was. They had, like, you could, like, actually have the king walk you out with the belt and everything. <laughs> <laughs> James Tony post-fight. I'm going to Burger King, baby, Burger King! <laughs> uh, Joseph Parker versus Alexander Dimitrenko in New Zealand. Um, interesting fight for this, for me, because, you know... Dimitrenko was just not using any of his advantages. He had that height, he had that reach. He was big as shit, Yeah, he was bro. very physical, but uh, the commentator, along with yeah. Colonel Bob, was made a great point that he wasn't using his physicalness because Parker was kind of bullying him on the inside. And he'd, he'd, he'd go out to try and hold and just get clocked with shots coming over the top. And just yeah. the whole defense was pretty terrible. But my biggest issue was that shot Parker made you know, after he took a knee, after Dimitrenko took a knee and he threw that shot and people were saying, well, it was the second the body shot, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the, mm-hmm. the one that he, he dug in and I don't know, I think that should have been ruled a no contest because he, you, you can't say, well, he's pretending, he's rolling around, he's not hurt himself. But the it, fact is, it was still a blatant yeah, illegal he wasn't, shot. It was like a shot that he didn't see coming, he wasn't bracing for it, so it's like it hurts that much more you yeah. know, when, it, when it happens. Yeah. And, and it was still blatant illegal. He was down for a whole second and a half. You know, he already hit him questionable, and then he hit him again. Yeah, and Colonel Bob and his co-commentator just kind of just completely over just it, right? yeah just ignored it and thought, well, he was down. He didn't get up, but 
to me, that's a no contest. That that should get. I know. Uh, Why have rules if if you're not going to enforce them? Well, Dimitrenko said afterwards that he was looking to maybe appeal or do something about it, and I hope he does, man. Because even though like he did look like he didn't want to be there and he wanted to kind of quit, that th- there's there's still rules in place for a reason. You, yeah. you can't. It did do look like that. it was WWE when he rolled on the ground too. Yeah, he they, rolled on. <laughs> that he was, was pretty awful. He was selling heavy, like <laughs> he was selling like Terry Funk or some shit. He was down there hard. Yeah, that, putting him over. That but was like awful. you said, Cam. You got to have the rules for a reason, and that was blatant. Yeah, and you know I've said it in the past when Joshua on some of his come up fights, he was uh, hitting guys when they were kind of on the way down or just touched down. Yeah. And we criticise them for that, and I don't like to see that, man, because you know you're vulnerable when you're getting sh- uh, hit, when you're either with one knee down or on the way down, taking more shots to the head. So I don't know. Yeah. I hope um, I hope well, Dimitri. Well, especially wins, especially when you're doing it consciously, when you're like going down consciously, and you're kind of like looking at the ground or whatever, and then you, like you don't see the next shot coming, so that could do way more damage than it otherwise would. Exactly. But what did you guys think? Uh, well, I mean, I kind of called it before. I was saying that, you know, Dimitrenko was a big, stiff idiot in the whole nine. You know, I remember back when he fought Eddie Chambers years and years ago, um, he made Eddie Chambers look like Mike Tyson, man. <laughs> Chambers was like bobbing and weaving, going on the inside and beating the hell out of this guy. So I knew that Parker wasn't going to have any problem finding him and he just roughing him up, beating him down. You know, he's like he reminds me of like some of these uh, fighters that you may see at, um, you know, at lighter weights, like at lightweight or featherweight or whatever. They're just really tall for the weight class. But um, they don't really have a lot of strength under them. They're they're just tall and lanky, but they don't have any like actual like physicality to them. You know, they can Looking kind like of be George like blown Garrison. over. Yeah, remember that old <laughs> basketball player Garrison. and do one for the yeah. kids. <laughs> Fucking RV is yeah. a bonus. That that was pretty much Dimitrenko though, and I mean Parker just pretty much blew through him. Um, actually more quickly than I thought he would. I thought it might take him a little bit longer to really start getting to him, but. He didn't waste any time. He went over there and bashed him up pretty much. Um, but, I mean, as for whatever kind of recourse happens, I mean, uh, I doubt that they would have any kind of rematch or anything like that. Um, you know, Dimitrico, like you said, didn't seem like he really wanted to be there. Parker has, you know, bigger and better things most likely ahead of him, especially, you know, as we'll get to it with the whole Fury incident, you know, possibly fighting for a vacant title. Yeah, so um, it'll be interesting to see how Parker progresses from here, though. When you said bigger and better, all that came into my head was Andy Ruiz. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely bigger. bigger. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Anything to add, Kev? Should we move on? The, the one thing I like that Parker did, I mean, he didn't look great by any means. And I don't know if this is really a situation where he could look great unless he did some shit where, you know, you catch the tall guy and knock him down to size with, like, one on the point of the chin, but... He didn't get frustrated. Like he stayed. He didn't get wild with his shots. He kind of stayed sharp and he aimed for the chest a lot. And I like that. A lot of boxers, even like when he was throwing that left hook, like he was putting it basically right in the middle of the guy's chest, like right through his gloves. He wasn't just getting wild and trying to headhunt. You know, like he was just making sure he he hit something. And I think that's, I I, I think that's like forgotten. You see, like in the late eighty, like the. 80s and early 90s that was more common where guys yeah. work rate was a lot higher that they wouldn't rush they would they wouldn't worry too much about headhunting and stuff and trying to have like that highlight real stuff they wanted to outwork you and they were putting shots on shoulders and the chest even if you were hitting gloves and arms like you were wearing a guy down that way and I think Parker was very good when he actually did do that where he stayed sharp with his punches and, and he would just aim for the chest just to make sure that he landed as opposed to you know, throwing long, wild punches. He kept him short and would aim towards the chest, which I think was was something that's good and will, will play out because if he if he does have to fight the, the the top of the division, a lot of those guys are tall now, like with uh, Joshua and you know, of course Klitschko and stuff. They, you know, even if, if Tyson comes back, like you're going to be facing guys six 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 seven. So I think that's that's a good trait to have, and I think he did well with it. No, I agree. The body is a big target, so. You said it, a lot of guys headhunt, and it's nice to see a guy go to the body. Yeah, and not even just the body, like shooting for the, the you know, the, the left hook to the body and the right, like just shooting it at the chest, below the guy's chin, below the guy's neck, just to make sure you hit something. Especially when guys nowadays especially leave their hands low. You got the guys, 
like a, a fury or something like that where they keep the left hand low to shoot the jab. All right, so now throw it straight right, but throw it at the guy's chest. Throw it at the guy yeah. just below the chin. Yeah, that accumulation, does, it, it takes its toll, and especially on the guy's legs, you know, at, over and time. It helps, it helps build confidence and develop a rhythm, too, for the offensive yeah. fighter. When you're swinging and missing, that's nothing Nothing yeah. gashes you out more and more frustrating. You well, and, espe- and, and especially as the opponent slows down, too, that leaves them more open to the chin. So those shots may land right where you want them to. Yeah. While we are talking about Parker, we may as well go into this belt situation, vacant belt, possibly if Fury gets tripped, possible fight with Andy Ruiz. For me, it's a big shame because... I was looking forward to the fight with Joshua just because both guys relatively untested and I think they're both at the same level. So whoever wins that is probably the next guy at heavyweight. And it's a shame if Parker does go in the direction of Andy Ruiz because then they probably won't see them fighting for a good couple of years. They'll go their own direction, home defenses, maybe try and unify with someone else. And it's unfortunate for me. Yeah, maybe, but at the same time, um, you know, it's it is nice to see things a little bit spread out too at the same time. And um, I, honestly, I think that I'd put um, Joshua a level above Parker. I think that Parker could potentially have, be a good fight for him, but at the moment, I would I wouldn't really favor him. I think that he still has some development that he could do. Um, I think a lot of these fights, he's he's um, largely developed a lot of bad habits because he's been able to blow over guys pretty easily. But like um, Kev was talking about with here against Dimitrenko, you know, he was using some more skills in his in his tool set essentially, and uh, I think that he could develop that a little bit more, and it would be a potentially better fight later on. And honestly, I don't think it's a walk in the park for him to to fight Andy Ruiz either. As a matter of fact, I actually might wind up picking Ruiz uh, <laughs> if and when that fight comes off because I think I think just his hand speed is going to be real troublesome for Parker. You know, he's a guy that kind of throws a little bit wide sometimes. And I think that Reese's quick speed up the middle could um, could you know potentially do some things. I mean, that it, it really all depends on how in shape the guy comes in, though. You know, it's a, that's always the question with him, with fighters like him. But I think um, I think he's 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 an, another guy that's um to me Parker's a guy that has uh just like more more physical talent in terms of like strength, but he has to work on boxing a little bit more. With Andy Ruiz, I think it's a it comes a lot a lot more natural to him. And he's a lot more fluid, but it's really just the fact that he doesn't like training. You know, he's he, you could tell that from looking at him. But um, yeah, I mean it's a, it's an intriguing fight though. I think that I think Ruiz versus Parker is a more intriguing fight than Parker versus Joshua. Kev, do you agree with Naoto or me that you know Joshua and Parker at similar levels, or would you put one of them above the other? I think both of them are above Ruiz, obviously, but I think Parker, I like how Parker's combinations, I think, are just tighter, and like, I, I think Joshua is, is better than him, and I think I would pick him, but I think they're close, I don't think they're that much levels apart, and I think Joshua, of course, has more of the hype, but if they fought, I'd pick Joshua, but I think, I think, um, I think Parker easily. I did. Did you know to say Andrew Ruiz? You know, fat boy who got like good hands and stuff like that. Yeah. What about him? Did I mishear that? Oh, I think I think Parker beats him pretty easy. Ruiz. I think he out. You know, just just outlands him and controls controls the distance and controls the pace. But I, I think the the fight. I, I I agree with you, Cam. Basically, is what I'm saying. And I think. Um, Parker could do well against Joshua, especially if he gets inside with those tight combinations. But I think Joshua is just a physical freak, and I don't know. I, I would I, I would pick Joshua in the fight, but I think they're 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 that's the fight to be made. Yeah, I was going to make the point that Shams one thousand is made in the chat. Parker's best win is superior to Joshua's best win. I do think that Takam win is better than anything on Joshua's yeah. resume, and I also you look at Joshua like Dillian White, like he. he I've never seen a guy get as much credit for beating a Dillian White. I mean, like, yeah, you know, they were hyping that up big time. And I was like, I, I think also, though, if you get this fight done early, like a Parker-Joshua fight early, I, and Joshua loses, I think it'll be really damaging to Joshua. But if Parker loses, I don't think it'd be that damaging. I think he'll have a chance then to even rebuild and make a 
to fight even bigger in a rematch like two years down the line type of thing because, you know, Joshua might run out of opponents. So I don't think giving that fight too early is a problem. I, I would prefer that they make it early as opposed to it sitting on it and letting it marinate. Yeah. The other issue for me with Joshua is he's had a lot of blowouts. You know, he's only gone seven rounds twice. One was that white fight and the other was Brazil. And in the Brazil one, I just didn't see that many adjustments. I remember saying it in the post-fight show that, you know, all, all Josh was doing was just the one two, and he wasn't stepping in with it. And Brazil was just stepping back after the jab. And um, Joshua and was Joshua falling short. Joshua went in lulls, right? Joshua yeah, yeah. went to lulls where yeah. he did nothing. Yeah, yeah. It seemed, it seemed like he kind of like ran out of ideas of how to cut off the ring and stuff like that. You know, so Brazil was giving him some trouble with the movement. If he would have just had a little bit of more power um, or just accuracy actually on his own shots, he would have given Joshua a significantly uh, bigger problem. But as it was, I mean, it seemed like he was being in trouble some far. That's why I would think the Parker fight would be 50-50 because I think Parker would just give him different... Um, different things to think about in the ring. The the hand speed, um, the 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 strength, the sizes. He's a big dude like him. Uh, it's just a really fight that I was really looking forward to, and I do hope it happens in November. I doubt it now, just because of the time frame. And I actually don't know who Joshua will fight in November now, because you see her and you just circling like a vulture trying to, you know, <laughs> saying in media, I hope Fury gets stripped, and then mean. Uh, maybe Vlad can fight for yeah. the vacant belts, and it's like, why are you putting words in? You know, no. If a vac- if a belt becomes vacant, then the, the he like t- wants to find a way to get the belt without having to fight Vlad. Is it's it's disgusting, to. though, man. It's disgusting. Yeah. It's I awful. just hate it. And, and the thing, the thing we saw with with Parker was he made adjustments, like I said, just in finding the target. Like, he adjusted his, his sight level on his punching, where he, all right, let me take it down a little bit and make sure I land. Like, whereas Joshua, it's kind of like, if he doesn't over-athlete you type of thing and just overwhelm you, he doesn't really have a, a, a plan. I don't know if that's coaching or what, but like you said, in that fight, he just kept with the same one, two, same thing, and hoping that it would work, and eventually it'll get through. And, yeah, that, that, that could work versus a Brazil. I'm... Shout out to the Bay Box and Lukey. But, uh, you know, he, he, the guy wasn't a threat. But at, at least, you know, he's there for a reason, Brazil, for kind of like a, a test for a guy moving up in a measuring stick of a fight. But he was doing the same shit. And then you could kind of see when it wasn't working, he didn't have no answers. And then he would go through 30, 40, 50 seconds where he wasn't doing shit but walking around the ring and posing and, like, given the idea that he was in control and he was confident and all that, but I mean, we could see right through that as as people who, yeah. don't, you, who know the sport as opposed to casuals. But whereas you, you could see, it's almost like he Parker's needed his feet to be set. As when it comes to just straight game playing and, and fighting, like where it comes to, I just think he has more polish, to be honest. What were you going to say, Nerta? Yeah, no, I was saying like you could see it. Like it almost seemed like Joshua really needed his feet to be set in order to throw. Whereas um, Parker does, I mean, he he is able capable of throwing on the move, even though it doesn't quite look as pretty when he's doing it, as opposed to when he's got his feet set, he can at least do it and has shown a willingness to do it. With um, what the fuck? Don't know what happened there. Seems like um, the call dropped. So let me try and get him back on. You guys back? Yo. Yeah. Kev, you back? Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. No worries. Uh, sorry, Nyota, did you finish what you were saying? Or? Nyota, I can't hear you if you're talking. Don't know if you've got issues with your line. Yeah, he sounds like he's breaking up. You know what you got to worry about, Cam, with, with heavyweights is trying to marinate fights, and then you'll have some shit like where Lennox Lewis got knocked out early in his career. Was it Alvin McCall or whoever? Like, you know, like, you can't just marinate a fight when any one punch could put somebody to sleep in the heavyweight division. Make the fight now. Let let, let the fight happen like a DeGale versus fucking Gross. You know, they fought early, and the loss didn't really hurt. Oh boy, he was able to rebuild his career. Exactly. If anything, the hard fights early run help you for the future because they give you that experience, they give you that knowledge. It's not a bad thing. Exactly. 
and and you're able to rebound more. Whereas if you if you have a fight when you're in your prime and you're supposed to win and you and you lose, then it's like where do I go from here? Exactly. Neil, to you, but yeah, I don't know what the heck happened there, man. That was crazy. Right. Um, you got anything else you want to add? Um, no, I mean, I was pretty much, uh, I pretty much said my piece. Um, I, I do, I, I do understand where you guys are coming from. And I mean, it is kind of unfortunate, but I mean, I, I really do hope that, uh, Hearn's able to make the whole Joshua versus Klitschko thing. Like if they're able to make Joshua versus Klitschko, then I think, um, Parker versus Ruiz is, I think just a uh, fine of a fight, you know, just by virtue of the fact that, you know, we're kind of eliminating some of these, um, contenders, you know, we're getting some of these other fights that we need to see. You know, we need to see these best fighters fight the best fighters. You know, like uh, we need to see Luis Ortiz out there and um, and uh, Big Baby Miller. You know, he needs to get out there and get some of these fights too. So, um, if they get it done, then um, I'm I'm happy with the the heavyweight division in spite of the fact that it's kind of lagged um, in 2016. Yep. Usually, we probably just talk about some more fights and then um, talk some news and then previews, but for now, I think we just stick with heavyweights. Talk about the news about Tyson Fury getting um, popped for cocaine. And I think today he put out a tweet saying he's retiring. Then he said he was just joking. <laughs> like, let's start off with the cocaine thing first. Like, Kev, are we surprised about this? Or is he just one of those dudes that you'd expect to be in some white powder? Yeah, definitely. I could definitely see you... <laughs> Serving that dude. I don't know if you guys watch Ray Donovan, like the one fucking guy that was buying drinks and shit, smoking cigarettes after he got the ti- uh, title shot in the bar. Like I could totally see him doing this. Like this guy, fucking. I don't know, man. When you're when you're a gypsy and you're traveling or whatever the fuck you're doing, you might as well bang out some coke to help the day, right? Come up with some <laughs> sick ideas. He probably fucking sit back and hatch his whole plan while he's banging rails. Yo, I'm going to say I got an ankle injury, then I'm going to show up to a fight. Fucking who knows, man. I, I There's not one thing he could do that would surprise me, put it that way. I think he's so off the reservation that anything he does doesn't surprise me because he's just a fucking, he's, he's out of his mind. Again, my issue is, you know, in boxing, the heavyweight division is the one that gets most talked about, you know. Generally, you know, in sports, it's always like heavyweight boxing always brings some type of attention. And he's, he's just bringing so much bad attention, you know. Kimo was pissed off. He was sending me messages today saying the Fury camp have kind of been playing games for the last, you know, year or so now. If, if I was a, a, a guy that's bought tickets and these constantly cancel fights, then he's... Another fight gets booked. He doesn't turn up to the press conference because he said his car's run out of fuel and, and his phone's got no battery. It's like, come on, you know. <laughs> you went to Germany. If you felt that when you came back, you didn't get your just desserts, fair enough. You take that on the chin, beat the guy more decisively in the rematch. Don't cry about it and then feign injuries because it seems to me, you know, a lot of this stuff, especially the ankle injury, fair enough. The depression thing, I don't know, man. I'm not in his shoes. But it's it, it, he's just a wild character, man. You, you, like Kev said, you can't, you don't know what this guy's gonna do next. He's gonna come to the press conference in a Lamborghini dressed as you know Batman. You don't know what this dude's gonna do. He's gonna take his shirt off and show how fat he's got over the last couple of months. He's just, he's just, he's out there, Tyson. He's just truly out there. Yeah, yeah, and you gotta, and it's tough because you don't want to minimize the whole shit with uh, mental issues. Uh, you don't have a history like there could be family histories or everybody knows somebody that struggles with something and they're just being military and being in the VAs and you see people that deal with like PTSD and other type of fucking symptoms that really destroy people's lives and then you got to understand it's like maybe this guy got popped and he was just like said he was depressed or whatever and he was self-medicating and that's why he was doing that or using for a way out or an excuse and you don't know what to take serious because if someone did have a serious mental health issue, they wouldn't be doing cocaine and they wouldn't, damn sure wouldn't be showing up as a spectator to fights like like the one that just went on the other day. What was that, the the Corolla fight he was at or what fight was he yeah. at? Yeah, he was, yeah, he was on the undercard. Yeah, if you're, if you're in such a bad situation where you can't do your job, then you've got to be in some type of treatment, if not a facility, 
some type of intensive outpatient program where you're going to be getting treated. You're not going to no fights where you're around various fucking things out there that, you know, are, are triggers. So it, it, I think he's kind of full of shit, although the, the situation may be legit. But at this point, I feel like, like you said, how many times you fuck over fans that bought tickets and all these cards? You got to, if you're a promoter, how can you work with this guy at this point? You basically got to send him packing and tell him to fuck off and and not even entertain him as a boxer for a while. Like, you just got to move on. I would strip him all that shit and say, well, if you are whatever, get your treatment, go through this, and then come back. But you don't fucking, you can't give this guy another chance to sell a ticket and, and disappoint fans again. He's becoming the boy that crowd wolf because I think this random test was the random urine test was on the twenty second of September, the one that he got um, popped for, and on the twenty third that's when they announced that you know um, he's pulling out the fight with the um, issues, and it's just too coincidental for me, you know. I I want to believe him, but when that type of shit happens, and like he said, he's out at the the fight supporting his cousin, and. When he's un- had his ankle injury, he went over to France during the Football World Cup and he was celebrating with the with the fans and stuff. It's like, well, you're supposed to be injured. Why are you in France, you know, buying people alcohol? It's just, I, I can't defend the guy. Nah, it's indefensible. Nota, any thoughts? <laughs> I mean, you guys summed up a whole lot of it. It's, it's crazy, man. It's, uh... It it is indefensible. It's 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 funny because the thing is, as much as I like Fury, I mean, all this stuff that he's getting into and you know acting like it's all good when it's obviously not. I don't know. I mean, it may it may actually just be part of um, his overall situation, like psychologically. I mean, I, I'd say that he definitely has more than just bipolar disorder. I mean, that this is me playing armchair psychiatrist or anything. Don't take take everything I say with a grain of salt, but. I think this guy has some like some serious issues. I uh, just just overall. I mean, it, and it's one of those things where I mean, clearly he sways back and forth at the drop of a hat. Um, you know, it's like he all of a sudden he'll be talking about he wants to retire, then like the, you know, a few minutes later, like the, just a few minutes later, all of a sudden he's talking about he's on top of the world and he he's he's Tyson Montana and all kinds of stuff, man. It's it's crazy, but. He needs to, he and or his family really needs to get him to get his shit together, you know, to put him in check and um, just get him back on track, man. Because I mean, it's it's gonna be a bad situation. We're, we're gonna wind up looking at a fucking uh, what's his name? Um, man, I'm blanking on his name right now. Uh, Johnny Tapia. We're gonna be looking at a Johnny Tapia situation years down the line if he doesn't get some sort of uh, help. And that means I think uh, the people around him, his dad, his uh, his wife, whoever else, you know, his cousins, um, just telling him to to get his head on straight and get everything together, man. Because I mean, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a rough um it's gonna be a rough few years for him. Looking forward, you know, like another guy that had issues like that, Riddick Bowe. You know, I mean, he he put it together for a brief amount of time as a heavyweight. Looked like he could potentially beat any heavyweight ever, and then quickly descended into uh into bolivian like mike tyson says so um i do hope that fury gets his help and i do hope as a fan that we see the best of the fighter because it's definitely a shame to see uh somebody that's at the top level that's um potentially you know the best fighter on the planet um period you know um to descend into to the rabbit hole um so quickly after his uh his greatest victory you know so that's pretty much all i got to add well said. All right, let's move on. Um, another there was, was a Ring TV Live Golden Boy event. I did catch it today. Uh, Peter Petrov versus uh, Michael Perez. One sided beatdown, to be honest. The cut that occurred, I think, in the second round. Um, Petrov had it on top of the head, so it wasn't really affecting him. Perez had it over his right eye, and blood was going everywhere. Um, I was impressed with Petrov, man. He's, he's, he, he's definitely developed over the years. Um, the body shots were yeah. really effective. He was going up and down, um, and he was finding angles. He'd step off to his side and shoot the uppercut, shoot the hooks, and 
Yeah, I haven't really got much to say. It's just, I think he's mandatory, mandatory now, I think. Um, to, to Linares. Yeah, to Linares. So I think him and Linares would be a good fight. Um, but yeah, that's all i got to say. Yeah, it'd be, a, it'd be an excellent fight. I mean, Petrov did his thing. Um, I felt like he was going to win this fight. You know, he he had his previous fight against Marvin Quintero, I thought, was, was a tougher fight than this one. So, considering the fact that he blazed through Quintero, I felt like he was going to do the same to Perez. And he pretty much did the job. Um, Petrov is, uh, you know, he's an animal. You know, he's like he's almost like a mini uh, Provodnikov. Although, I think that he varies the shots up uh, significantly better, even if he doesn't necessarily have the... Power. It's like he gave away some of that power for better skills, you know, if you want to make a comparison. And, I mean, his only losses um, are to really high-level guys. I mean, he lost, he got knocked out by Maidana years back, and then um, he had a loss to Zlatichini a few years ago, too. And, it was, I mean, it, was, it seemed like it was a fairly close fight if you look at the scorecards on box or anything. It was a weird fight, though. It happened in Montenegro. So, um, you know, Zlatichini's uh, hometown, ostensibly. But, I mean, uh, Petrov, I think, is a troublesome fighter for anybody in that division. I mean, just the, the power, the pressure, the punch variety, um, the fact that, I mean, he has a high work rate. He he definitely looks like he's always in shape for these fights. You know, he comes in, you know, ripped to, to, to the gill and um, comes in with uh, just a high work rate of, uh, of a variety of offensive uh, punches in his arsenal. And... Um, I mean, just a solid fighter. I think that he's very, he could very be troublesome for um, for Linares, uh, should that fight happen to come off. Probably not next or anything. You know, Linares probably has uh, significantly better money opportunities ahead of him for the next maybe even year or so. But, uh, I mean, once Petrov gets a shot at any of these guys, I won't be surprised if he manages to pull off an upset because he's he's that type of a fighter. He's a guy that comes in with a jacked-up-looking record that busts your ass and you know takes you out and doesn't give a damn about what your um, reputation is definitely Kev did you catch this yeah and I like basically on what Naoto said uh, to quote Hamada yo he comes hard yo he's fucking ripped rock hard you can tell he's somebody who loves to train and get in shape you know just by the way he comes in and and he's dedicated in, and he's in a good division for fun fights, right? So, I, I, I definitely, um, you know, he's he's still at one thirty. You know, it's one thirty five, right? It's loaded, pretty, pretty top heavy. But they also got like a good ten, top ten where there's a lot of mixed matches and fights. And um, he did the job, you know. He and he did the job how he's supposed to, basically like a fucking like a truth commission, just coming forward and checking him out, and and really just. You know, very business like, very fucking, very matter of factly. Like he really took care of business, and you know, Michael Perez is somebody that everybody I know who's ever come up against Mike Perez or came across him has nothing but good things to say about the guy. Like he's one of those guys in boxing that was a talent and wasn't making no money, and he was like a good guy in the sport that would give good work to multiple weight classes and in the gym and stuff, and everybody would be pulling for him, but. He's obviously one of these guys that falls just short of that that top level, and he's destined to be like a journeyman, like almost almost not not necessarily like a jobber, like you know, not necessarily the Brooklyn Baller, but you know, he's he's like he's not one of the top guys, and this is probably the last time he, he gets one of these guys. Now he's probably going to be served up for a lot of the he's, you know prospects that are going to be coming up to get a name to move forward and, and be a measuring stick for prospects probably. He's like uh, Rocky Maivia before he was the Rock. Yeah, <laughs> D'Lo Brown. He's the D'Lo Brown. <laughs> D-Lo you, know Brown. I mean? you get you get a couple wins on him. You beat D'Lo, then you move up to the Godfather. But yeah, it's it's one of those things, man, where he just he can't put it all together, or he has more of the skills. Like you see him on the mitts, you see him in the gym, and you you look at him like, oh, this guy could be a world champ. But when he fights the top guys, he just he loses and loses decisively. Kev, just going on what you I, said. Oh, sorry, yeah, man. yeah, what's up? No, you said about lightweight being, you know, one of the deepest divisions, and I think it is. I know a couple of years ago we were saying how great welterweight was, but the fights didn't really materialize, but... Too many you, divas. Yeah, I'd say, like, the top 15 of lightweight is probably be, like, good mi- mix and matches. There's, there's a lot of good level, equally level guys in, in, in that division, and probably that and featherweight are my two favorite divisions. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, Light, if you just lightweight. list them. Go ahead. Lightweight has not only that, but they have a lot of different – they have a guy like Petrov who's going to look good in a good fight against anybody. You know, it's not just like styles make fights type of thing, but lightweight has enough guys where they have enough talent and basically an, enough of all-around talent where they can mix and match all of them and make good fights. Like, we talk about Crawler who just lost to Lenars, but you put him in a fight against most of the other top guys, you know – it's still a good a fight. Big fight. Yeah. yeah. And say like a Verdejo could, could rebound and come back. Uh, or even like a Petrov Krola fight or something like that. And, you know, Mikey Garcia coming back to the weight class. Um, is what's his Ray name? Beltran? Like Luke, Ray Beltran. Beltran. Ray Beltran, like a Luke Campbell, Shafikov. Like there's uh, Hank good, Lundy. There's good fi- Henry Lundy. As, as Hank. casual fan will say, <laughs> who's Henry Lundy? I'm no <laughs> Hank. <laughs> is he related to Hank or some shit? <laughs> fucking casual fan my man Juan Diaz Juan Diaz is still out there too Jose Felix yeah. I mean just a number of great fighters there's Miguel a lot Vasquez. Of, there's a lot of guys and I mean I think because the fact that really 140 don't got too much to offer that you know that they're gonna be staying there and I think that's a good thing so I, I'm looking forward to it hopefully these things get made that would be a perfect weight class if like a Richard Schaefer does do what he said he was gonna do get some of that overseas money Get get a network and do like a tournament by division. Like you get a top That'd ten be the or twelve. Starter. Yeah, yeah. one thirty five. You do a round robin type of tournament. Create a losers bracket. Do all that. Fuck man, that. You know what I'm saying though, Cam. Like not only are they good matchups, they're, they're like good matchups for fun fights. Definitely. No, definitely. I'm just looking at the division now. And- so many Omar Figueroa is still out there, no? Or is he not there no more? Nah, he's at fucking he's welterweight. At, if he can even make welterweight, that. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That motherfucker blew up like Nitro. Yeah, <laughs> once he left once he left Joel Diaz, because Diaz caught him fucking hiding chocolate bars under his bed. <laughs> well, yeah, he's still got, like, you got Flanagan there, Shafikov, like, all the No, names. Flanagan's my guy, though. I like Flanagan. I think I want to see Flanagan fucking versus... Uh, Mikey Garcia is what I want to see. Cause yeah. I, I mean, shit, I, even guys we even guys we forgot about, man. Uh, freaking uh, Saul Rodriguez, Sharif Bogare, Dawood or Dan, really great names. Right. Anything? Else What's his name? Luke Luke Campbell. Right. Is he still out there? Robert Easter yeah. Junior. Yeah. Think yeah, about Campbell. Easter Junior. Well, Come. Of these guys. Come. Come Come as well. just had a good fight. Come Shakakov. You could literally just put these names in a hat. And pull out matchups, and they'd all be good to go. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think Luke's fighting soon as well. He's fighting uh, Dirty Derry Matthews in Liverpool. But yeah, let's move on. Um, one card that was in the UK, Box Nation picked it up. It was a uh, MGM Gym Promotions, but their Scottish division. So the card was up in Glasgow, and overall, it was a pretty subpar card apart from one fight. Stephen Ormond. The Irishman, he was uh, in a sixth rounder. I don't know why he was fighting a sixth rounder. I know he's fought in the States the last few fights. But he was uh, fighting a sixth rounder um, at a weird weight as well because Omen came, he usually fights at lightweight, and he came in at 145, but his opponent did come in at 136.5. So I don't know if he just <laughs> totally blew the weight and they just paid him off or what happened. But his For opponent, the Chavez. Yeah, but his opponent, uh, Zoltan Zabo, like, he came to fight, man. He didn't come, come to fall over. Um, it was it, it's interesting, man, because I don't know if they didn't really scout his opponent because first round, Almond, his usual style is to walk a dude down, a lot of shots to the body, a lot of mixing it up, upstairs, downstairs. And uh, Zabo just kind of threw with him, threw uh a right hand just after Omen threw a left hook, caught him in the first round, dropped him. He got up. He did seem a bit, you know, like it did hurt him. Carried on the next couple of rounds. Um, Omen started coming back a bit more work rate. He was landing to the body, but every so often Zabo would just kind of catch him with a shot, which would uh, get Omen's attention. And um, in the fifth, uh, Zabo threw just a, it was like a sweeping left hook just under Omen's elbow just before Omen was about to throw a left hook. And, yeah, he just totally took it out of him. He couldn't even get up. Um, he was on his knees, got counted out. And it's a shame, man, because it seems like it was just to stay busy, you know, a fight that he expected to win. Now he's lost it. 
and he's kind of gone a bit backwards. And what for? You know, sixth rounder. Well, you, you didn't really need this fight. He, just a very strange um, circumstances, to be honest. But I, I like Orman. I like his style, and I hope he bounces back. But just really weird from um, from then, guys. After he's fought in the states as well twice, I think his last fight was in Boston against Jimenez, um, ten rounder, and before that he fought a rounder against Orlando Vasquez in uh, Massachusetts. But um, yeah, weird. But apart from that, the card was shit. So there you go, Box Nation, for you. Quickly uh, give a shout out to all the people in the chat. We got PM versus Shams 1000, Court Music, my boy, Supermaster, Pinhead 360, Bill Bones 101, Wasif 1, Nothing for Something, Mr. Dermo, Tico, Overbruv, J3 the A side, Jack Captain, Scorsese, my boy, Dean Scores, Low Country, Jason 268, BRD Hay, Crom hyphen Scott, Just Just, Chad Hogan, Local Mexican Kevlar and 15 guests. And I think Raphael's in there too. I just seen him send a message. Right, boys, anything else you want to talk about news wise? I know some fights got announced. Mm. I know I made some notes. Well, I wanted to jump on a fight that happened last week too. It was on the PBC Tuesday night um, fights, Tuesday night knockout, or whatever they call it. Uh, Brian Perella got upset by your Dennis Ugas. Which is um you know pretty big shocker you know I mean you, your Dennis Ugas was a guy that had been in uh, training camp though for Linares um, leading into the fight with Crawler though so he definitely got some good work and he definitely put some good work on Perella man it was a it was a solid upset of an undefeated um, prospect so wanted to to give a shout out to him you know he's a guy that you know he he won he's one of these dark horses at um at welterweight essentially that could uh, Potentially, you know, beat anybody on the night, I think, uh, unless you're the absolute elite of the elite. So I just wanted to give a quick um, shout for that one. And then um, I noticed that uh, Zab Judah got arrested. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it. And then he gave the wrong uh, wrong, wrong name, right? When he got pulled over, he gave somebody <laughs> else's name. Wasn't that last week, though? I'm sure that was a couple of weeks ago. No, I think nah, it was like two weeks ago. Yeah, he was in a in his white car, right? And he fucking gave the officer a different name. He was yeah. High. Well, that's it. I just I only saw the story today. I like because I just saw it. Um, they posted they posted up a story and they showed his mugshot and all that stuff. So I didn't realize that it happened um, previously already. Oh man, Zab Drew is a funny cat, man. He was uh buying a, a condo for his brother on like the boardwalk here where I live. And I remember it was a couple days before, like two weeks before the Baldemir fight, and he was with, <laughs> with my next door neighbor, you know, the one that leaked uh, Lloyd Banks' album? <laughs> like those girls and fucking two 12 packs of Corona. I'm like, oh, I guess he's not taking this fucking fight too serious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, then, and then not only that, he was on the flight when I went to Vegas the one time. I was like, damn, I'm on a flight with 50 and fucking 50 Cent and Zab Judah. I'm like, the fuck they doing on this commercial shit? But Zab Judah's face is so fucked up from the scar tissue and all the cuts. It, it, it's unbelievable. Yeah, you can really see it on him. Yeah, it's bad. It's uh, I feel bad for it. Yeah. I, I'll always Burns. remember Zab for the way, you know, he got dropped and got up against uh, Costa Zoo. And choked out the fucking ref. <laughs> yeah. That <was> a... <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? What, what's the white dude's it's name? It's Jane Jay Nady, oh, he's the worst. He's a when big he has, like, dude as well, man. Fights, he would have fucked Zuda up as well, man. He's a big dude. I think he's ex like Navy as well. Yeah, yeah and you yeah, see when that's he, why he always does a little salute. Shit. Yeah, and he slaps the shit out of people's like backs when he goes to break them. Like he fucking yep. yokes them. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I think I said Costa Zoo. I meant Costa Zoo. <laughs> Costa Zoo. Costa Zoo. Badagio. But yo, I know the answer you were mentioning the PBC man. How like I was looking at their, I was looking at a schedule for like the remainder of the year and how the great have fallen so quickly. It's it's non-existent. Exactly. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Rumors, yeah. rumors are that they're telling people. Like I know Steve Cam reported it, but the thing with them is you got to take it with a grain of salt because they hate <laughs> them so much. But like Steve Kim was reporting that PBC is bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> Al Heyman's going to prison for a hundred years. Uh, he crossed the street and he got a ticket for jaywalking. But uh, like supposedly, like they they told the fighters, like it trickled down to the managers. Try getting a fight on your own because we're not getting any fights for the rest of the year. <laughs> and a lot of the thing is like the PBC's like networks. 
that we're dealing with the PBC's fights, like it's college football season and they're doing big business, obviously, with college football. So they basically said, hey, man, your fights didn't, couldn't pull no ratings. So we're focusing on this and, you know, we'll see you after the after the um, by like next spring or some shit. And not only that, like I personally know a couple of fighters that were, you know, basically promised money and their money <laughs> come check day was like 25, 30 percent light. Mm. So they're already starting to do that on people. And don't get me wrong, like especially the one person who I know for a fact got shorted big time, that 30 percent still got paid very well. But like, yeah, so it's not a rumor. That shit's going. And we pretty much said on here, Cam, I don't know if you remember, like, when I was beefing with, like, fucking Beeb and all them, that the only way, because they're not making money, they're basically losing money on every single card because they're paying for the TV time, not selling any tickets, and overpaying the fighters. That the only way that this is going to work is if at the end of, like, year two or so, they get a big TV network deal the way, like, Fox gave a deal to UFC. Because then it's like, all right, we lost all this money, we're behind, but now we got this deal. Moving forward, now we could go on and do whatever we could do. But their ratings just were so so bad. And they weren't bad for, like, when it comes to boxing, they're pretty good. But when it comes against regular network TV and what they could put on, it's like, it's bad. So, well, I mean, it was it was kind of a mixed bag. I mean, there were certain shows that did really well, and then there were other ones that did pretty yeah. pretty awful, you know. And and it, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they didn't really get enough word out as to when a lot of these fights are happening, who was fighting who, when, and where. they were always on different networks. If it's they yeah. didn't know where they would be. It's convoluted as fuck. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the whole thing with balances where like you used to be able to stream their fights online, and then all of a sudden this recent Ishe Smith fight versus Frank Galarza. You need a fucking antenna to, to watch the damn thing because nobody carries bounce. And then you didn't know if it was going to be on FS1 or Spike or FX or whatever the fuck it was going to be. So they were just throwing shit against the wall and hope it stuck and it didn't. And like even like their network TV where it's like, well, they did 2.3 million and people act like that's good. Yeah, that's good for boxing who usually only does 700,000 a million. But basically if you look at like NBC on prime time, if you look at that time slot, they could have put a rerun of fucking Friends on and got a 2.3. So they look at it like, why are we going to give big money for original programming if we don't have to? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, they're pretty that, much done. It's gonna What it's going to end up degenerating back into is Showtime and HBO like it was. And Spike. You know, I yeah, they'll, they'll keep either, it up. either Spike. Well, Spike actually is dropping them too. Spike was unhappy. I think the one place that will keep them is FS1 because Fox is, is losing UFC to ESPN, and they're having bad programming. So I think FS1 <laughs> yeah. will con- continue with uh, continue with them. And I think it's good if 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 they could run, like, the way Showbox has a program with, like, you know, those Ukrainians that I like and keep cards like they had the other day on Showbox on FS1, they could be cheap cards and good good fights. I think that, need, might, yeah. that might be their that- thing where they go. Yeah, that and they just need, you know, it's, it needs to have better continuity, you know, just... um. Yeah, keep people abreast of when yeah. these fights are and what, like what time, you know, what day. Yeah, if you know every Tuesday at eight o'clock or ten o'clock, it's FS1. Yeah, then you're good. Yep. Kev uh, just just made a point in the chat which I agree with. HBO is done with boxing. KH HBO loves Triple G and Kova, and that's it. And Roman Gonzalez. Yeah. I don't think they're done with with boxing, or you know. I mean, the thing is, they're they're trying to put some money into Usyk now. I mean, they obviously just paid for Lomachenko and Walters. So I mean, I think I don't know. I think what they've been doing is more of a strategic thing to avoid getting bought by um by that Fox dude. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. The big uh the big um executive guy. As an overall but, year and, though, they've had a weak year. Like they've had a handful. Cards and yeah. most of their fights yeah. haven't they're, really been too. Their budget's dropping every year. It's dropping. They care less and less. And I think, and I said it on with Lynn, I think last show. If they drop boxing, they probably won't lose one subscriber year over year because they're gaining a certain number of subscribers every year. So say they lose a couple thousand, that'll be picked up on their normal, basically gain every year. So. I don't think they really care, and, and they're realizing that 
through especially through this year when they're doing less and less that they don't need it. So why are we going to keep sinking so much money into boxing? And I agree with Jasha. Is they, I know for a fact this one fighter is trying to get a big fight on HBO right now, and they just don't give a shit. They're gonna they're like they're basically saving that card for Triple G Jacobs on December tenth. And even though this other fight could be a big fight, they're like, well, what if that falls apart? They're like, then we'll get Triple G versus fucking Highland or whoever. We just want Triple G and nobody else. <laughs> and so, like, I, I agree with Josh. Yes, they're in the Triple G, Kovalev, you know, main events business, and that's pretty much it. And yep. they'll have a couple fights, but that's about it. Yep. All right, let's talk about a fight that got announced last week. Lomachenko versus Walters, man. This is a this is a good fucking fight to kind of finish the year. It's in late in November. What day is? It? I think it was the November twenty sixth. Yep, at the yeah. Cosmopolitan in Las Vegas, man. This is a fight, man. Uh, Walters has been inactive, man, but he he he's really impressed me the last couple of fights. Even though that uh, one that was a draw wasn't really a draw, he won that quite co- co- convincingly against Jason Sosa. But you know, he starched my boy Donaire. Starts Darchinian, you know he's he, he's a he's a powerful guy and he and he can box, man. Um, Lomachenko, though, that's a that's a whole new issue, man. Uh, this is a fight. Uh, I'm looking forward to this shit, guys. Yeah, it's intriguing. I mean, the thing is, um, I I am glad that it's happening now as opposed to before, where neither of them had a title at super featherweight. I mean, at least now Lomachenko is coming in with something to show that he's at least a top fighter in the division. So th- this has more. Um... Nearest has dropped off. Let me try and call these two back. You back? Yo. Later. Yep. I don't know. Cut off again. All right. All right. As I was saying, um, there's there's more proof behind uh, what these guys are doing now. Because the thing is, when it became the whole thing with Walters couldn't make 126, at that point, to me, the fight meant nothing. Because it was two guys who were unrated and unproven at 130 trying to fight, you know, and then people were going to overrate whoever won. Now, at least, they're, they're, they both have kind of a foothold in, like, the top five of the division. And, I mean, the, the winner of this fight is, you know, it really is a definite top three, you know, a potentially, you know, number one or number two type fighter at the division. And so that, I think it's definitely a, a great fight, um, a good mix of a, a kind of a boxer puncher in Walters and, um, you know, a boxer uh, mover, you know, kind of a slickster in uh, Vasil Lomachenko. I think it's just a good matchup. it would be interesting to see um, how much Lomachenko has especially learned from the, uh, the Salido fight because I think Walters brings – um, some of that same kind of pressure and just overall physicality that Salido brings, even though I don't think he's quite as tricky as Salido. Um, I, I still think that it'll be interesting to see uh, how much Lomachenko has progressed and uh, just, you know, how good Walters is, like where his ceiling really truly is. Because as you mentioned, you know, with like Donaire Dochin, his his uh, biggest victories are over, you know, significantly smaller guys, guys that were themselves kind of who Walters was as as a flyweight or as a super flyweight. You know, once they kind of um, met guys a little bit bigger and stronger, they weren't able to really keep up the task. So it'll be interesting to see if Walters is able to do so against um, Lomachenko by comparison. Kev, your thoughts? I'm just fucking hyped, to be honest. I think this is like a classic match of like a big, strong dude with power and like the classic boxer, fucking mover boxer. And I don't know. I think everybody seems to give Lomachenko a pass for the Salido fight. Like, the homosexuals, like the MV Chews of the world, like, they give him a pass because of weight or the, the ref or whatever. But the fact of the matter is he, he didn't overwhelm me. He didn't do enough, and he lost. So, I don't know. Like, I, uh, this is a big fight for him. Like, if he loses this one, it's kind of like no more passes, right? Like, he has two L's on his record. So, this yeah. is a lot of pressure. I mean, as, big, it, as it is, he's getting paid a, stupid money right now. I mean, for a guy that has a loss within 10 fights, he's getting paid like damn near a million dollars. This is crazy. It, it, is he making a million bucks for this fight? That's a lot of, that's a lot of a, money. Cl- I imagine it's probably somewhere around there. I mean, I don't know the official purse, but I know for his last fight, I think he made, what, like 750000 for Martinez? Oh, shit. That's a lot of money. Yeah, but yeah, this is a fucking big fight, and I think, I think a lot of people are down on Walters, and that draw was bullshit. We all know that draw was fucking... Fucking top rank giving him a little spanking. Well, and it looks better now. <laughs> in the, yeah. 
since since Sosa knocked out um, Fortuna. Fortuna. Yeah. Yeah, but but still, like you know, it was basically Tom Frank was like, "Oh, you flirted with Al Heyman. We'll give you a little slap, a little mm-hmm. little spanking. We'll we'll put you in our house and in MSG and fucking give you a draw, even though you won almost every round." So it was just one of those things where uh, you know it's a win. So, but for some reason, people are a little down on him, and you know, everybody like it's it's weird when he comes off the knockout wins. Everybody talks about how great he is. Then he has like one fight, and now it's like, well. Maybe he's not. If he don't knock you out, he has no talent. I don't know. I don't think he's just one of those sluggers. I think he's a good fighter. I think he's got physical advantages over almost every fighter he fights, and I think he will in this fight as well. It's just that, I don't know, it's just that Lomo Lomo is technically one of the best fighters in the world, and when he pivots and really gets on a groove and going like that, that's great, but let's just see what happens when he pivots and maybe catches a left hook at the end of that pivot. Yeah, well, and the thing is with, with Lomachenko is he's he's one of these type of fighters who's going to be extremely good against very orthodox kind of straight up and down, you know, textbook one two fighters. textbook fighters. Yeah. And unfortunately, Walters kind of has a lot of that. Um, he does have a few extra tricks to him. You know, he he can um, do a little bit of a, a bob and weave, a little bit of a roll, and um, you know he's able to go like you know punch on the move and and such you know a little bit more than a lot of those textbook type fighters but a lot of his basis is very textbook so i think that's a big part of the reason why lomachenko is favored in this fight on top of the fact that i mean considering the whole thing the scoring issue with sosa i doubt that walters is going to get very many um benefits of the doubt in scoring here against lomachenko Uh, i seriously doubt it especially considering how um, close the Lomachenko versus Salido fight was. I mean, that that was no way in hell a split decision. That Salido to me dominated that fight easily, and so for the, for the cards to be as close as they were there, I think that Walters is, is going to have to yeah. beat Lomachenko very clearly in order to get a decision over. And, and Lomachenko, I mean, um, Walters' last three fights, who's he got? He's got. Donair, Sosa, and Mariaga, right? Mariaga. Yeah. So you've got three fucking pretty high-level fights back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. So yeah. he's coming in, even though he hasn't fought in since December of you know last year. He's basically a year in between fights. He's still coming in sharp when it comes to level of competition. And uh, this fight, I guess, is going to be in Vegas or it's going to be out west, right? Yeah, yeah, Vegas, Cosmopolitan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I don't, I don't, I don't know. Walters, you know, his best performances were out there too. So who knows? I, I think, I think Walters though, his his size, his strength, and I st- even though he didn't stop Mariaga, he didn't stop Sosa. I still think he's got world class power. And Lomachenko, I, I, I think the eye test, it's there. We see it, but outside of Gary Russell, I mean, what win does he really? I think he gets more credit than a lot of guys with similar re- resumes. Yeah, very true. But, I mean, I, I still think he's a, a great talent, and I think I favor him in this fight, but I I just think it's a I mean, it's, it's the difference between showing off a certain amount of skills and then proving that those skills are really real against the, the yeah. elite. Yeah, against the absolute elite. I mean, like... Bruno can do all the shoulder rolling he wants against Vicente Escobedo, but when he fought yeah. against Maidana and Malinaji, it didn't work as well. Exactly, and I think I think Loma, uh, Loma is a, definitely a top level talent guy. But let's see him start. Let's see him, you know, fight and beat top level guys. And here we go. Like Gary Gary Russell's his best win, and now let's see this would be his best win by far. But I just I'm just excited for it. If I have to pick, I'm going to pick. Uh, Loma in a unanimous decision in a 115-113 type of fight, 116-112. Because I, hey man, if, if, if even during Gary Russell fight, when you have that tension and when you have, when you got to be on the balls of your feet and you got to be at your best for that long, like it starts to wear you down. You can't slip against Walters. You're going to, he's going to have to be like that at all times and that, that could wear him down and, and break down his energy and make him, you know, lose a couple rounds going in just because he's – that tension. I, 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 he's not going to just be able to go out there and free flow and, and go out there basically like a sparring, like a shadow boxing session, winning winning rounds like that. He's going to have to really – he's going to have to get Walter's respect with, with, with a couple shots early. Otherwise, Walter's, I think, is going to walk him down. And 
and win some rounds by just basically wearing them down. Just with the schedule, I'm so kind of looking forward to. Obviously, we discussed this fight, but Salido Miura's being made for 17th of December. We got yeah, that's another great fight. Hopefully, Triple G in a decent fight, you know, on the 12th or early December, and yeah, Kovalev, Kovalev Ward, Ward late November. It's it's looking good for the end of the year for the boxing fans. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah definitely. Tight. There's the, there's some uh, some big uh, potential for the the Japanese New Year's cards and stuff like that, and some of the super flyweight fights. They're trying to get Roman Gonzalez that, is that back. The card that what's his name uh, Riga fought on two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually there's 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 um, two competing cards on uh, either the yeah. 29th or the 30th. Yeah, so yeah, Riga was on one of those. Lenars was. Um, and the, usually they stack them, and it'll be like three or four world yeah. champions on each card. They spend pretty good money out there for those cards. Yeah, I think Jonathan yeah. Guzman. Yeah, because they... Jon- is Jonathan Guzman fighting on the 31st? Possibly. Uh, I don't think, uh, I don't know if it's um, a done deal. Confirm. okay. All right, Cam, just... who you take? I know it's early. We didn't do the preview, but first first thought, who are you picking in Loma versus Walters? I would have to. I would have to go with you, to be honest. I'd have to go Loma, close fight. Like, just pips him. 115-113 type fight. Um, just wins enough. Yeah. Uh, I'm just so looking forward to it, man. Because it's, it's good to see two top guys fight each other. And especially with the point you made about them being at a weight. Oh, sorry, yeah, it was a nail to that made. But both being yeah. at a weight where they can't they make can't. excuses because they're both going to, in theory, come comfortable at the weight. So one guy can't say I was drained, blah, blah, blah. So I, oh, I wasn't used to it or any of that shit. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to it, man. And I also want to see if, you know, the the move up, if Loma's got that power, if the move up helped him with power or if that was just because he faced, you know, a faded fucking Roman, you know? Exactly. On his way up. All right, let's move on. Just, I think Selby's... Next defense with IBF has been announced today against Jonathan Victor Barros, Argentine. Who who's, fought. Who, who's that? Exactly. I think it's Argentine that fought, fought yesterday. No, I think. Selby? Is, is he related to Shelsby's? <laughs> I think I think the cousins or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> All right. But yeah, I don't really know about this much about this Barros dude. Um, Shelsby. He fought yesterday or fought today, was it, in um, in Japan against Satosoi Honaso. So he's become uh, mandatory to Selby, even though Selby's not doing much with his career these days. But yeah. he's yeah. one of the yeah, Barros is one of these guys that's been around like as a French contender. He lost to like the very best guys. He lost to Gamboa. He lost to Caballero. He lost to Mikey Garcia. Um, I mean, he's a solid fighter though, so uh, I wouldn't count him out against um, against Selby. I think there, there's definitely a potential for upset. See, that's what I like about having Naoto. Usually, we would have to do what every other pod did and, like, somebody box wreck him and act like we know him and you know we've seen him. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know Naoto. how, how, how podcasts be doing that? But like, oh, yeah, yeah, he fought this guy. And they, you can tell they're just reading, <laughs> they're reading off a box wreck as they're listing the names in order if they fought. But, yeah, nah, I'm with you, Cam. I, I, didn't, I didn't know the shit that Naoto just reeled off. But <laughs> Sel- S- Selby is, is being a little protected, huh? I don't know, is, uh, is his relationship with Hearn doesn't seem to be that good. And obviously he signed with Heyman, just as Heyman's money's kind of dwindling. So, I don't know, it seems to be in a bit of um, a limbo at the moment. Limbo, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, it seemed like his his uh, relationship with Hearn and all of them wasn't the greatest either, so. Yeah. yeah. And Selby's last fight was uh, that Hunter guy, right? Eric Hunter, was that <laughs> Yeah, the, yeah, it was. The funnier, yeah. the funniest thing is that uh, Gary Russell was there. Uh, what, which card? Wasn't that the Santa Cruz Phantom card? And Gary Russell was saying yeah. like, "Yo, man, I want, I want, I want, I want your fighter. belt." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and at least Selby's like, "Well, nobody knows who you are." <laughs> Gary Russell. <laughs> and Gary Russell's like, "Man, the, everybody, like everybody knows, everybody who, knows who I are. am. I got the money belt. <laughs> that means I'm the." That means I'm the money man. <laughs> he he really thinks because he got the green belt that he he's the money man in the division. <laughs> green for the money, go for the honeys, man. He's on that yo, that Don Magic could, One shit. Yo, he couldn't even sell out his backyard for a barbecue. This motherfucker talking about he's the money man. Oh man, I like Gary Russell though. He's looking good his last couple fights. 
No, nah, but but Leon, but Selby, like the, the whole thing is, if he fights Barros, I mean, the whole thing is, you know, there definitely would have been more eyes on him for fighting, you know, Russell instead. So that's the the main point I was making, in spite of the fact that it was pretty funny that uh, that Russell kind of got shitted on on TV like that. I think Selby's a good fighter. I, I I don't know, Cam. I don't know how you feel about him, but I'm surprised because. I thought that fight was in like June, July, but it was actually in April, so it's unlikely he's going to get out again this year. So it's quite inactive for a world champion to be. I I, I like Selby. I just sometimes think that um, he doesn't sit down on his punches enough. He's a bit pity patty sometimes. He's got a bit good slappy. Movement. Yeah, a bit slappy. And I think he thinks that he's better than he is. He, he has that cockiness. I think that's exactly it. He has that cockiness, but he doesn't always show it. In the fights, he doesn't show the um, um, his his you know he, he he writes checks that his actions can't check cash sorry yeah, cash yeah, yeah. yeah. it's kind of like when when he does like he kind of admires his work and he poises and postures but he doing it after not doing anything very impressive or. You know what I mean? So it's or like he's making all the slick movements without like really following through. Without yeah, without cashing out or paying off, and and it, I think I think you're right though, Cam. I think his disposition is one of somebody who thinks he's a lot better than he actually is. Yeah, and since he, has I, that, I still think he's a good fighter though. I think there's a good yeah. fight to be made with him though. Yeah, since he signed with Heyman, he had that weird fight against Montiel where he looked pretty bad, and then he didn't look great in the Hunter fight. So he, he seemed to be going a bit backwards. Yeah, and I think that has to do with a lot of, like like you said, being in limbo. He has a lot of insecurity about what's up and what's going next, where he thought he was basically signing with Heyman and he was going to get peace of mind and get money, and it hasn't worked out the way he thought it was supposed to. And when, you have, when you're not able to get phone calls, I know guys who are signed to Heyman that have never talked to him once. <laughs> they have no way of getting him on the phone. They basically have to deal with Lou DiBella, and that's it. And they have no idea what's going on with their careers. So I can imagine what this guy's going through right now, being that he's all the way out there. Exactly. All right, boys, let's quickly preview next week. Not much to talk about. You guys know I'm not the biggest Ricky Burns fan. So with MV2 not being here and Brian King not jumping on the line, um, I don't think there's going to be much talk about Ricky Burns versus uh, Relic, but... He's fighting next week in Glasgow at um, the SSC Hydro. I caught a bit on Relic when the fight got announced. He's he's not a straight bum. He's undefeated. Um, um, Style-wise, he's just a classic kind of boxer, high guard. But I don't think he should really cause Ricky Burns any issues. But you never know with Ricky Burns because sometimes, you know, in his last couple of fights, he's not really showed up. Um, not... N- not his last couple, but you know uh, when he was when his confidence was a bit low after that, there's like kind of losses and stuff. He didn't really look that good, but I don't know. He should be able to beat Relic quite easy. Um, Undercar wise, Scotty Cardle's on there, probably one of the worst fighters in the Gallagher's gym. So not much to be said there. And Dillian White's fighting Ian Lewis, and and that's about it. Another weakish Hearn card. A lot of Hearn's card have been weak. The main event might be decent. It isn't in this case, but some of them have been decent. But the undercards are usually weak these days. He's not really putting money into the uh, undercard unless it's a pay-per-view, where we might get another competitive fight. But it's a shame. But it seems like that's the that's the direction Hearn's going with his uh, UK cards. Yeah, I mean uh, Ricky Burns. Uh... I think I think um, Relic will give him um, a little bit more trouble than I think you you may um, give credit for though. Um, uh, you know the, I think the the knockouts haven't so much come from just the pure power so much as accumulation. But I think I don't know. I think that's the type of fighter that could be um, give a little bit of trouble to Burns. I think Burns will win, but I mean I, I'm not entirely sure of um, how easy the victory is going to come. And I'm sure, um, I think Broner said that he was going to be ringside, so it'll be interesting to see if um, he pulls any sort of crazy annex. But, yeah, Broner um, already put on, uh, Broner put on Instagram and all that, that if uh, Burns wins, they could be fighting next type of thing, so. Yeah, yeah if, if Broner can put down the nachos and make weight, oh maybe he can, uh, he can actually. <laughs> the best is that pic- the picture <laughs> at the fucking, at the basketball game where he's got like the denim jacket on. 
and the and the button down shirt, and he's walking through holding like a, can, a big tray of food and a big ass super sized coke or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> like his shirt's untucked, and you can just see his belly bulging. But I, yeah. I I don't know if that if he can make one forty anymore. But if he can, I don't, that's I don't think so. that's a. I'd be I'd be willing to I'd be willing to bet the fight gets made and then they finally win. Broner's like one forty three, one forty four. Yeah, yeah. Well, Broner fights at one forty three and Burns is like one forty. <laughs> Yeah, he actually makes the weight. He actually makes the weight, and Broner misses that shit. Like Broner's gonna be like, "Oh shit, no one told you, yo." <laughs> oh man, no one told you we going four forty three and a half. <laughs> we going Sean Porter weight. Me versus Sean Porter. <laughs> Adrian Broner's on that Canelo Cotto shit, man. Broner, yo, weight. they couldn't even do a rehydration <laughs> weight because because yo, your boy fucking your boy Adrian Broner thought that it was only gonna. Count for Porter. Kenny Porter's like, nah, if we do that shit, you gotta do that. So that shit got nixed. They're like, oh, fuck, I can't re that shit. <laughs> All right, take that one out. Fucking, <laughs> fucking clown that guy is. He, he legitimately thought, like, that just meant that Porter was gonna have to do it because Porter was coming down to wait. So that's why that, that never got fucking put in. But, um, yeah. I, I like that fight. We were talking about this fight back in the day after DeMarco at 135, yeah. like, at Burns versus, um, Burns versus Broner, and I think that's yeah. actually, I think Broner, say what you want about him, I think he's the next level down from, like, the top guys, obviously, but when matched correctly, like the DeMarco type of fights, or the, he, you can have fun fights, like, you know, yeah. the Madonna fights, a fun fight, and those fights, and I think this could be one of them. Yeah, I mean, most I of his Ricky fights Burns are fun when, when the fun opponents fights. are completely out. Yeah, and I was going to yeah. say, Broner is really a fun fighter to watch when he's not, when the opponent's not completely outmatched, like, you know, And that's the absolutely. only time... When they're completely out speed speeded, like uh, with your boy John John Molina, Alec Va- Alec Berg Diev, whatever the fuck his name is, yeah. like those guys had no type pain. of speed, so they couldn't deal with it, and that's yeah. why those fights were blowouts and stuff like that. Or at least, the, or, or at least boring. the skill set to negate it. Exactly, negate they don't the have speed. the timing, they don't have the size to just walk them down. But yeah, I think Burns versus him would be like two head on guys. He'll actually yeah. be backing up Broner. And I think it will make for a good fight. So I'm let, I, I hope Ricky Burns looks very good in this fight, just because I, w- I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. I would love if Broner would fucking go travel over there for the fight. That's that not, would that'd be, be that'd be classic. great. Though. Yeah, that'd be great promotion. Bring the band camp over to the UK. Am yeah, I right? yeah, band camp. Am I right in saying when um, Broner was mandatory at one thirty, then? Burns dropped the belt and went to 135. I can't remember. I think that's what happened. Yeah, nah, Burns yeah. lost to Beltran, remember? No, but before... No, 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 no. That, that was afterwards. I'm talking about... Oh, okay. Uh, uh, when they were both at 130. Yeah, yeah. When they were both at uh, 130. Yeah. yeah, no, that's what happened. Burns moved to 135. Then Broner won the belt at 135. And then um, they were both champions at the same time. So it was... Um, they were trying to make that fight. And it was like the two of them and Miguel Vasquez were like the top three of the division. So, But just for me, of, um, if Broner Burns happened, I don't really see it competitive, man. I, I think Broner beats him quite convincingly. Oh, so you think the opposite of me. I thought it would make for a fun fight because of, of Burns' output. I don't know. When, when I see Burns fight, it just he's very basic for me, man. Like, he, doesn't, he doesn't provide yeah. anything special. And... Well, I mean, I think I think Broner would probably take a little something out of him to make 140, though. So, I mean, I think uh, the fight may I be a little basic, bit more even than you give credit for. I think basic people are what give Broner fucking problems when it comes to just, like, basic just <laughs> will to win throwing punches. You that know is what I mean? true. Like, if you're, if you're trying to stop, like, basic, look at Paulie Malnagy. He just fucking pumped a jab in a 1-2 and he fucking almost beat fucking Broner. He, the fundamentals, know. like you said, yeah, like first, in basketball. First four <laughs> rounds, it was fucking 3-1 Paulie, you know? I think, yeah. like, I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm coming off like a Ricky Burns hater, but I think, like, Theo Payne would give Burns issues, man, and, like, Broner beat the shit out of Theo Payne. I know Stars Triangle fight theories. Him, yeah, 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 true, true. And um, you gotta understand, Burns snatches souls. That's true. Yeah, exactly. And he has got, like, a titanium jaw as well, after Beltran broke it. So. <laughs> yeah, Beltran freaking on the on all kinds of steroids, fucking pissing on John Donald Trump signs. You all, see that? All Twitter? kinds of gains. So, well, no, you see, you see what he was what he was posting though. He was like right. saying like I, I take steroids every every breakfast every morning. No, I missed like, that. Come get some. That? <laughs> Ray Beltran. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He, he's helping his career. 
And he, and he, and he said, and he said, um, it wasn't yeah, bad I enough with... he had the back acne. It wasn't bad enough <laughs> he had that, but now he's actually just saying it. Well, he said, yeah, I work with Memo Heredia. Do something about it. <laughs> Yo, that's the best line. I'm fucking rocking that from now on. Every time one of those YouTube guys fucks with me, I'm like, yo, I fuck with Memo, so holla at me. <laughs> oh, shit. Classic. Yeah, it was pretty know, good. I didn't know Beltran had that in him. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty good because um, people were trolling him after uh, Top Rank had uh, talked about how Beltran, like, he had just had a comeback fight a few weeks ago. And it was like, oh, Ray Beltran returns and such and such. And they were showing a highlight of him knocking the shit out of Takahiro Ayo. And that was the fucking fight where he tested positive. So it got called no contest. And so people were saying, like, this is the fight where, like, you're showing highlights of him, like, all juiced up, knocking some dude out. And then that, at that point, he started responding to people, to people like, yeah, I take steroids every breakfast. And, like, I work with them already and do some shit. Um, at the same time on Saturday, <laughs> sorry, you guys got anything else on the Burns and um, Relic or Burns and Braun or anything else nah, before we move on? Oh, nah. good. Yeah, yeah. Nah, go no ahead. No worries. Um, so that's on Sky Sports in the UK. At the same time, Box Nation have got a domestic card on in Harrow, headlined by Liam Walsh versus uh, Andre Klimov. Klimov, you might remember, he thought he fought um, Jose Pedraza last Um I think it's a final eliminator for Pedraza for his IBF 130 title, even though I think he was still looking up to go to 135 and try and have a title fight in the first fight at that weight. But I was reading some stuff on boxing scene this week and he's kind of going back and forth. I think his dad's his manager and um, I think his dad was turning down fights that they were getting offered and then they were saying, oh, his, his career's in limbo because he's not getting the fight. So I don't think he's having issues... Uh, I think he's having issues with his promoters and stuff, so he seems to be stalled a bit. But yeah, Ryan Walsh um, huh. is fighting Klimov. And again, you mean well, Liam? Sorry, uh, Liam is fighting Klimov. Ryan's fighting uh, a week later. But it seems um, Box Nation don't they don't really help themselves. They should wait for a weekend when Sky are not planning the card because I can't really see yeah. them having good live figures and for a channel that's when HBO and Showtime were always doing that they'd be off for two weeks and then have a card on the same night it's stupid. so stupid <laughs> at the same time exactly at the same time you, you just you just kind of biting away you know the hand that feeds like yeah. the, the boxing the, the boxing support and well, uh, they, 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 it seems like they don't get the idea of like a rising tide raises all ships you know like if somebody's in the box and they're going to want to watch all the fights and they're going to want to take time like set aside time on different days or at different time periods in order to, to watch the fights you know what I mean like for, for them to try and put on these competing cards and stuff and I mean it's cool if it's like two like big time headliners and they know, like, they're really trying to compete with each other for, for viewers for a specific reason. That's one thing. But when it comes to a lot of these, um, like, low-level cards, it, it really makes no sense at all. I just need to take back everything I just said because uh, Shams... Was it Shams 1000? Yeah, Shams 1000 in the chat just made me aware that the Ricky Burns fight is on Friday, which I didn't know. I thought it was on Saturday. So totally take back everything I just oh. said. Well, there you go. But, I mean, they still sometimes do that, though, too. So, I mean, uh, it applies there, even if it doesn't apply for this particular weekend. <laughs> That's true. Anything else? I know Diego Magdaleno's back against someone I've never heard of. Um, and yeah. Estrada's fighting on Saturday. Yeah, he's there. making his debut, or his re-debut, essentially, at 115, trying to get fights with Gonzalez and Inoue and them. So, I mean, he's fighting a guy that's um, kind of a journeyman, uh, this guy, Raymond Tobogon. So he should make quick work of him, and if he looks good, I mean, they're saying that there's a rumor out that he may actually wind up fighting Inoue in the uh, in on New Year's, which would be huge. It'd be like two of the guys that people have been demanding Chuck Latito fight, fighting against each other, you know, to try and get that win, um, trying to get that that uh, that opportunity. I mean, and then um, Estrada also called out um, Carlos Quadras. He was his team was trying to petition the WBC to make him versus Quadras a final eliminator. For um for a shot at um, Gonzalez because they want to ba basically have it mandated because 
Um, in spite of the fact that it seems like a lot of people think that Estrada is the one that's been ducking a rematch with Gonzalez or that he's been kind of divaing his way out of um, the whole thing, the only person that I've seen asking for seven figures for that rematch is Gonzalez. So if anybody's kind of pricing themselves out, I'd say it was be, it was more Chaco than Estrada. But um, Estrada's definitely trying to go out and uh, make his way into back into contention and try to become the man of the division, doing you know what you should be doing um, for for any fighter at any weight class. So um, I, I gotta applaud him for that. And then um, you know, speaking of Gonzalez, uh, they're talking about him possibly coming back December tenth, potentially against uh, Cesar Kinsarungvasai of Thailand who was the guy that Quadros won his title against. And um, since he lost to Quadros, which was a technical decision off of uh, cuts, um, he's racked off 13 knockouts and 14 wins in two years. So, I mean, that shows you the kind of animal that that dude is. So it would be interesting to see if uh, Gonzalez takes another tough fight like that, you know, uh, considering the fact that he's had a pretty excellent run so far on HBO. Thank you, Nyota. You guys got anything else you want to discuss before we... Get out of here. Um, I had something on my mind. Hold on, let me look it back up again. Yeah, I'm good. Ah, no, I'm pretty much done. Just uh, Andre calling out everybody again. On Lukey's show, and Lukey didn't ask him to ask about no disrespect, but you a bitch, so he definitely struck out on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was on the phone call because I would have asked him. I'm like, yo, do you understand you can't say no disrespect and just say anything you want? Oh, what did Luki... No disrespect to Carrie. Luki... Well, I mean, he's got... He, he, called, he called out Lara. He called out Cotto, Brooke, the Charlos. So... He basically said Lara, too. He's just like, I would fight him. I just don't think it'd be a fun fight type of shit. He's like, he'd rather fight Canelo because it'd be a fun. And Charlos, he thinks, are too shook and stuff like that. So he... He yeah. he even was calling out somebody that he's cool with. It was a uh, J Rock, who's you know they used to work together and all that, and he's cool with J Rock. But he's like, fuck it, that'd be a fun fight. So that you know he's saying the right things actually. You know, yeah. I'm pissed. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah, hey, Daniel. What's up? Good man. How are you? I'm you made sorry, it just I, before. You made it I just before. Off, no, I'm good, man. How are you, uh, Lynn? I'm good, man. I'm just, I feel like a king in the bay. You know what I'm saying? That's what's you walking up, around like you a god? Yeah, I'm just waiting to get shot. <laughs> Drive-by status? Yeah, in my leg. <laughs> while, while walking your dog? Yeah, ask you, hey, what, what kind of dog is that? <laughs> Anything you want to talk about? Um... Ah, uh, what what what's uh what's on the agenda for this weekend? The Ricky Burns. Burns fight, right? Taking yeah, place Ricky on Friday. Ricky Burns, Juan Estrada. Defending that one, defending that one forty strap against Estrada. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Damn, props to Estrada, man. He's uh, <laughs> he's off the con, man. I'd McGregor. pick Estrada. Moving up, fucking twenty five pounds, man. Good for him. Yeah, man. Animal yeah, status. Too. I pick Estrada by indoor round. Indoor round. In... Yeah, so he's going to fight Broner next, huh? That's what it looks like. Yeah, as long as he gets through Relic, okay. I was going to say, don't look past him. You you were you were one to um, give props to Zlatan Cannon beforehand, nicknamed him the Latin Cannon, and he beat Ricky Burns. Even though you were just trolling him. Yeah, I mean, we could, we could see, like, in the aftermath, though, that Zlat is, uh, he's legit, you know, he's definitely one of the top fighters at, at the weight class or around the weight class, and so. Limp, you still there? I think you fell off. I think, I think Luke went, ran over to him and gave him the fade. Caught him slipping. Drive by status. Got him! <laughs> All right, we'll give, uh, we'll give Lim another minute to see if you can come back. If not, we'll uh, go get some rest. Well, I will anyway. It's uh, it's late for me, but you guys, it's during the day. You get some food and that. But yeah, boxing wise, it's kind of domestic cards for the UK. Um, I saw someone mentioned in the chat. I think it was nothing for something. Nothing's really been mentioned for a date for De Gale and Jack. 
I just doesn't hope that I just don't I just hope that's not something that will get dragged on and kind of go into next year, maybe February, March, because it's kind of too long, really, man. We need this fight to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which yeah, one? It's it's holding up the division, the Gale Jack. Ah, uh, okay. So what's what's the issue there? Don't know. They they're saying last week that the fight's kind of almost finalized, and but I don't know. It's getting close to the end of the year now. I, I can't see mm. it being this year. Both guys should be satisfied. Is. If if their purse was just a year at Nando's, they should be satisfied with that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. With it. Because 165 is uh, the quietest division in boxing. Lim, don't, one of them. Lim, don't you think... Yeah, yeah. Lim, don't you think... So, um... At least according to Abel Sanchez, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we know Abel's never lied. <laughs> that motherfucker <laughs> says, there's no names at 168. Like, you got names at 160? Yeah. All right, all right, well, buddy. Toriano oh, Johnson. really the worm. Really the fucking nah, worm. Nah, I got love for Abel, though. I just purchased him, like, 40 shirts on Amazon.com, all size XL, with some uh, washed-up blue jeans. So he's good until he's... Once he, once, he gets right residual, once he gets his residual checks for Narcos. Exactly. Really good. Yeah. Uh, the bum-ass version of Narcos on, like, Amazon. <laughs> yeah, he can't fill up that Netflix, Netflix spot, but... Yeah, man, I I just want to give my two cents on Tyson, my man Tyson, the kingpin fury. You know, props to him for keeping it real. Tyson no, but in, all, in all honesty, um, I know the whole mental issue thing is uh, aside, and it, it's obviously a serious issue, but my only thing about that is the way that he's cultivated his career up to this point really makes it hard for people to feel sorry and apologetic for him. Right. I mean, mental issue, again, is something that's extremely serious. And it's one of those things that are are so kind of intangible and it's so hard to diagnose properly that it's 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 a bunch of he say she say like the science isn't even well established at this point. But at the same time, again, that's not what I have issue with. My issue is how he's held that belt hostage, how he hasn't. You know, if this is really such a big issue, it's something that he should have handled with better care much earlier in his career. And again, just just the way he's been acting like a jackass for these past years really makes it hard for people to feel sorry for him and, and be on his side. So if he really does have mental issues and a drug problem, then you know, I'm sorry to hear that, but just fuck off, you know, let the belts um, be in the hands of, of the next guy up because he's just holding this that entire division hostage. You know, we were so excited for a time that maybe that, these matchups between the young guys would finally take place now that he got the belts off the clincher, but the exact opposite has happened, and it's all it's all his fault. So I don't really have too much sympathy for him, but uh, I think other than that, I mean, November looks like an incredible month of boxing. I'm sure you guys touch upon Lomachenko versus Walters. That's a fucking awesome fight. I don't know why it's taking place two days after Thanksgiving, however. I feel like the scheduling is very poor. And I don't understand why all of these big ass cards are all taking place in November. Like, why can't these guys learn how to schedule fights consistently throughout the year so it's not just peaks and valleys? Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about that, but it just feels like it's too kind of centralized within a short period of time that it's just overloaded. It's just too saturated. Totally we touched on that too, how like there'll be no fights for two weeks, and then HBO and Showtime will have a fight on the same night instead of separating it. So, yeah. yeah. It's stupid. It d- and it actually um, it takes a lot of the limelight off of certain fighters um, because like it's on to the next one and then on to the next one. You know, it's like the, the, you don't get. I think, I think a lot of these guys they might not get as much credit for some of these wins as they might deserve just by virtue of the fact that there's too much to talk about. Yep. Lim, I just, agree. Just early, I know it's quite early, but who would you pick, Loma versus Walters? A oh, Lomachenko, easy. That's a perfect stylistic matchup, I think, for uh, for Loma. I mean, obviously, Walters has, um, you know, the power, but who knows? Yeah, I kind of said something similar. Uh, we were pretty much all in agreement. We we all have uh, Lomachenko favored for the most part. I'm, I don't yeah. know about anybody else that's not on the line at the moment, but, yeah, it yeah. seems uh, pretty unilateral. Yeah, they all told me that they're picking Lomachenko, too, so you don't need yeah. to ask for their opinions. They all, they all <laughs> exactly. told me, like, a couple minutes ago. <laughs> Let's keep it Fuck real. Em. We know we know more than them anyway, so it's all good. Especially me, I know yeah. the most about boxing. Yeah, exactly. man, you're a boxing expert. Yeah, I, I I trained at the wild card. I would know. Exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's for you, Jack Captain. <laughs> Carry spit buckets. 
fucking Jack Captain. No, but in all honesty, I think um, <laughs> I, I think I, you got to give Lomachenko props, man. I, I know Nota, you 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 don't like Lomachenko too much, but the way that I know that fight against uh, that bum ass Puerto Rican at one thirty wasn't much of an accomplishment, but I still think it's impressive that he's going up and down with what like eleven or twelve fights. And Ooh, to me, Roman Martinez, uh, Loma, Loma. Yeah, but you're saying who versus the bum-ass Puerto, Puerto Rican. You just saying uh, he was talking about Martinez. Yeah, but oh, Martinez. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was saying, Roman Martinez. All right. yeah, yeah, oh, my bad. I thought you were talking about Gonzalez. I got all of these weight classes fucked up. But <laughs> I think it's pretty impressive, man. Um, and I just I want to see him against Toledo. I feel yeah, like that the, the, main, the main problem I, I've personally had was just with um, fan, fan hyperbole more than anything. That's fair. I think Lomachenko is yeah. a very talented fighter, and that's why I favor him to win the fight against um, Walters, you know, especially yeah. because I think, um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, the, the situation with Walters and the scorecards versus Sosa, and then Lomachenko with the scorecards versus Salido, I think Walters really has to win conclusively in order to get a decision against <clears throat> Lomachenko. I think anything close is going to Loma. Is this fight at 26 or 30? 30. Okay. Okay. I, uh, yeah, does, does Walters have a belt at 130? No, no, no. Lomachenko does when he beat Martinez. Uh-huh. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, that's uh, that's gonna be a good one, man. I think I'm gonna go to that fight. It's at the Cosmo- Cosmopolitan. Um, as a Korean American, I don't really celebrate Thanksgiving, so that's not an excuse for me to not make the fight. <laughs> <laughs> me and my family, we go to uh, this generic ass restaurant chain called Marie Callender's in America. It's the most. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the most disgusting and sad diner you can imagine, and it's only where pretty much non-Americans go for Thanksgiving just the, because they want the to funny, fit in. The funny thing stuff. about that is, I don't even think on the East Coast they have Marie Calendar's restaurants. Yeah, they only like, have the fucking frozen meals. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna skip that. I'm gonna skip Thanksgiving this year, and you know, see that fight. I'm excited for that. But yeah, like I mentioned, man, I just it doesn't make sense because. The 19th is Ward Kovalev, and the week right after is Lomachenko versus Walters. Like, come on, man. Yeah. It's just, I don't know. But other than that, is there anything else on uh, kind of on the new news waves the past couple of weeks that you guys discussed? No. Uh, really. Touched on Lee Selby. Obviously, you, you touched on Tyson Fury. Apart from yeah. that, um, it's trying to trying to get fights with either Quadras or um, Inoue. Gotcha. Yeah, he's daring to be great. He's fighting Ricky Burns, right? <laughs> why not? Why not? Why? Why not? Has Jose called in today? Nope. Nah. <laughs> Fucking Jose. He's only on for the sexy fights. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he doesn't care about any of these fights. Nah. But no, no, he's a superstar. <laughs> he's a superstar. No, no, he's a superstar. It says that uh, Chavez retains WBC title. No, I'm sorry, I don't know that's, what I'm reading here. That's a here, female but... Chavez. I think she's a <laughs> oh, female champion. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Chavez got a WBC title? <laughs> he got it with his cereal box. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, fuck the WBC and Chavez. Andy likes cereal. You don't know so. what they're brewing. Yeah. Oh yeah, Nathan yeah, Cleverly won, right? Yeah. Did yep. you see that? Did you see that fight? Joe, then? Joe Morgan's boy. No. Was it good? You see, he took a salt through his elbow. <laughs> it's so funny. Cause... It was. It was an okay fight. I mean, it's it's worth watching. You know, six rounds of uh, pretty good action. Yeah. Yeah, my bad, Shams. One thousand. I know that uh, he is a two-time world champ, which is fucking mind-blowing to me. I mean, jeez. Like, I think in fifty years, the only thing I remember about Nathan Cleverly is getting his ass whooped by Kovalev in four hours. <laughs> they need to like rephrase that. It's like two-time belt holder, like world champion. I mean, is just diluted. Yeah, so Broner's much. a Broner's a four-time world champ, isn't he? Exactly. Yeah, and he's gonna be a five if he fights Ricky Burns. So. No, he's still, like he's still Oh, he's still 40. He's got one at 140? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, nonetheless, guys, that's pretty much it. I mean, November looks like a really hot month. I can't wait for November. I'm still excited as fuck about that Kovalev Ward fight. Um, I did read an a article recently on Kovalev, which I thought was just fascinating about his childhood and his upbringing. Um, and just how much respect he gives to Andre Ward. I was really surprised about that, too. Like he said. didn't call him a piece of shit. Right, nah, he didn't call him a piece of shit. I fucking love when he says that shit. 
piece of shit. Adonis Stevenson is piece of shit. Yeah, but where's yeah. the uh, link? You got a link for that one? Uh, it's on. It's on um, boxing scene, so you know it's credible. Fuck. Yeah, I'm blocked from boxing scene. Yeah, <laughs> yeah somebody, somebody <laughs> some, user, some, some user paraphrased it, so I believe it 100%. Maybe Lim, yeah. Lim quickly, I know this is not Mystic Men, but you're saying November is a great month. Will you be making your way to New York? Oh, uh, uh, well, I guess I can say, touch upon that because the 205, uh, Monoc- yeah. Monocle isn't on the chat. Leon isn't on the chat. Yeah, he so may send his uh, uh, expletive messages tomorrow. <laughs> you know what? I, I don't think I'm going, unfortunately, just because of work. I can't take three weekends off in a row, and it's fucking expensive, man. Dude, like the, the, the tickets are exp- the yeah, tickets for the fight is fucking crazy. There's, uh, there's like $25,000 tickets for, for floor seats, so... They're going the fucking Mayweather route right now, so it just shows you what kind of draw Connor is. Yo, know, it's crazy. Like uh, Triple G sold out for like twenty grand, and the gate was only like two point two million. Yeah, this this UFC gate is gonna be around like nine million dollars, man. Nah, it's gonna be way more, man. Yeah, I'm just saying uh, minimum. Just it's gonna be like yeah, mid. you know, think about it. Yeah, it's I crazy. think this is gonna do like fifteen to twenty. It's the, mean, the disparity between Connor and everybody else in, in combat sports is yeah this crazy. uh yeah this card is pretty fucking crazy I'm not gonna talk about UFC anymore but again it's just like fuck I wish I wish we could have these crazy mega events you know in boxing like like have the Lomachenko Ward uh, those two fights be on the same card you know just make it a super event that'd be amazing yeah. But that's what they're doing. Like this, this UFC 205 card has fucking like five, like Lomachenko Walters type fights on the undercard, and then wow. a fucking Ward Kovalev like on steroids as a main event. So, just shows you what kind of uh, fucking matchmaking they're doing on that end. So, Damn, but that's hey, what you can I'm do when you complain. when you own everything anyway. I'm not gonna complain, man. November is a good month of boxing, so gotta take that for what it is. But I actually just had a thought that I've been kind of. Think, thinking over these past couple of weeks, I've always wondered, what if PBC just invested all of their money in purchasing outright all of the belt organizations? Is that even possible? Like, what if they purchased outright WBC, IBF, all of them? Because really, that's the core of the issue, right? If you go ahead and unify all of those belts into just one single belt, you're essentially giving yourself the ability to run a UFC-type model, well, right. the the other the, the yeah the thing the only I mean that'd be kind of troublesome. The other thing that they could potentially would have done, or could have done, um, I think that would have been more uh, viable would have been to just take hold of one of those belts, and have all your fighters fight for specifically for that one specifically, and um, basically just try to try, try to um, devalue all the other ones. Basically, like put right. on the best fights and say like, look, we've got the best fights for the for this belt for whether it's the IBF or the WBC or whatever you. And, um, you know, that's what's up, you know, and, the, and no fighter that's not a PFC <laughs> fighter can fight for these belts unless you come over to, to play with us, basically. They should have bought the You know, IBO. That's, that's definitely... Go ahead. No, so I mean, they should have bought the IBO, accurate. that would have been cheap as fuck. No, 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 but, I st- but the reason why I say purchase all of the belts is because you're not leaving anything whatsoever to chance. Yeah. So no, no, of course. I mean, obviously, I, I know that's what you were thinking about now, as well, but I'm just thinking with... What is it, roughly like a half a billion dollars that Heyman invested in PBC? I mean, obviously, I'm just throwing numbers out there. But, you know, if these are private companies that you can acquire, I mean, again, this is just me thinking out loud. But I've always thought, like, what if you could just buy the WBC, the WBO, the IBF, and fucking whatever the fourth belt is and just bring them all together. Just fucking get rid of, like, all of the – well, not get rid of, but just merge them all into one organization and just have one belt, just only one belt per division. Like, that's what would save boxing. If there was none of these fucking silver, gold, copper, bronze, fucking yellow, blue, orange, ice <laughs> belts, shit like that. Like, fuck Pokemon that red, Pokemon, Pokemon green. Red belt, Pikachu belts, <laughs> fucking inter- intercontinental Indian Ocean belts. Like, fuck all that. <laughs> Just one belt. The hardcore belt. The Arctic belt. The no holds belt. barred belt. You know, <laughs> fucking just, held together by the, duct tape. Just get rid of that shit, man. Just one belt. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That makes so much sense. Yep, that's all I got for you guys. Maybe uh, we should start a a crowdfunding website, you know, ask for about $400 million and we can save box (laughs) together. We can call it the Coalition Coalition Championship. Yeah, exactly. That has a ring to it. Yep. 
and then I'll just be Dan White. Call me Dan White. <laughs> Cam will be uh, Cam Fertitta. <laughs> we'll, we'll, run this, we'll run this empire together. Yeah. Big Kevin McCarthy, yeah. I can get the ref? What? <laughs> yep, so that's just uh, my dream, man. And PM, PM versus says there's too much money for that. I don't know, man. I don't feel like these belt, these organizations are really worth that much. So, I don't know. Hopefully that happens one day in the future. Because boxing is an incredible sport. I, I, I said it so many goddamn times. When boxing is at its highest level, there's nothing prettier than watching just two high-level guys go at it. Not even a, not even an amazing UFC fight. So, so that's my two cents. Quickly, my final thoughts before we go is, are you guys looking forward to Billy Joe's Saunders' first defense of his middleweight title against Arthur Akavov? Blow job. Low job song. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, they're fucking incredible. Now, <laughs> these are the fights that the fans want to see. Exactly. I mean, you know, Billy Joe Saunders is clearly, you know, he's very athletic, you know, and he goes in there against uh, Akavov, and, you know, it's just two t- prime athletes um, going at it for the championship of the world. I mean, what, what more could you ask for? <laughs> he's a fucking weirdo, man. Like, how has the Eubank fight not happened? Like that's crazy. Like how how is Eubank be Saunders two not happen? Like there should be big money in that, no? And I know uh what should we call it? Like when when Danny first talked to Triple G like, a year ago and they told him like some awful number it was like less than what he made for more, he was like, All right, I'll I'll go fight B- blowjob Saunders first, get his belt and hopefully he'll make the fight bigger. And he fucking called B J and they basically didn't even talk to them. They were like, Nah, we're just not interested. They just didn't even want to fight. Like he, I don't think he's interested in fighting anybody. He just wants to talk shit on Twitter. Well, and, well I don't like. I know this is something that you guys don't want to discuss, but regarding the Golovkin, you know, Can- Canelo ten million dollar flat offer. Did you guys talk about that? Uh, it, it no, wasn't flat. Actually, they, they there was there was pay per view involved. In that. Even if it was flat, man, I just if you're Golovkin's team, why don't you take that shit? Yeah, you have to take. He's it. fucking it, delusional. It's, it's twice as much than you've ever. Maybe not. Maybe it's it's a little bit less than twice. I don't know how much you made for Brooke, but but again, this is just my my thinking towards it. Is that Golovkin? To me, and this is coming from a Canelo, a huge Canelo fan. Like that should be easy work for Golovkin, right? And you've been chasing Canelo your entire career just to make some fucking concessions. And you've been taking big money. And Jesus, as soon as right. they make, as you, as if, they if make you win, it, if you if you win that fight, the upside is fucking astronomical for you. But as soon as he, as soon as they get an offer, a realistic offer, they came back and they basically said, "Nah, basically um, a flat fee with you know whatever." That's for that's when there's a clear B side in in a fight, and we're not a clear B side. He said, "We're we're like Manny Pacquiao and Pacquiao versus Floyd, and they want forty forty five percent of a split." So basically, they're saying they don't want the fight. Uh, it's 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 again these fucking guys. Like it's not about. Getting, of course, it's about from K 2s perspective. It's about getting the best deal. I I understand that. Like, of course, I fucking understand that. But again, it's just when you're presented that opportunity to capitalize on Canelo's loss against you, and you're that much better than him, just fucking yeah. take it. You know what Especially I mean? Especially when you got offered a deal that's, that's like, like, yeah, his deal's no, that's what I'm saying. To offer met- Canelo, Canelo got that- offered way less for the Floyd fight. And Canelo yeah. is way bigger star than Triple G is, and he took way less to fight Floyd. You got offered a historical amount of money, and you turned yeah. it down. Like that's, that's yeah. Awesome. I mean, the thing is, the thing is, you're making money on the front end, big time. And if you beat Canelo, like the, the money you make on the back end, potentially for a rematch or for other fights, I mean, it's it'll be huge because if Golovkin goes in there and starches Alvarez like that, like in front of millions and millions of viewers. That shit, like that, they'll they'll be boxing as headlines on a bunch of sites where you don't normally see it. You know, as it is, they they give Golovkin a little bit more coverage than the average fighter. So if he was to go in there and just wreck Alvarez the way that you know some of these other fighters have have failed to, you know, like primarily speaking of like Mayweather, for instance, regardless of the weight differential or any of the, that other shit, um, it just it it plants a seed in the minds of people like whoa, like. Somebody just beat the shit out of and knocked out Alvarez. Like, damn, like, who's this guy? What's he about? And all that stuff. You know what I mean? It, it, it creates a whole new um, revenue stream for yourself to where you'll get crazy money for even fighters that aren't on the level of an Alvarez because you'll be the name. 
Yeah, but he's not a clear B side against Canelo. He's it was a co A side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course not, man. He's right. got he's got uh he's got Wasam and um your your buddies Montero and them <laughs> talking about how great he is. Uh, limbs dropped off. Neil to Kev. Any final thoughts? Or shall we make a move? Nah, I'm pretty much uh, I'm spent, man. So it's yeah. all done. I dropped enough knowledge. Any more, I'll have to start charging. Yeah, <laughs> it's not cheap either. I heard so. No. All right, thank you, Kevin, Neil, for jumping on. Thanks for the limb as well. Thank you to all the people in the chat and all the people that download the show week in, week out. We'll be back next week. Peace. You just listened to the Boxing Coalition. I did. Man, I love boxing. I fucking love boxing. A big shout out to the Boxing Coalition. You're a newbie. No, I ain't new, man. If my fucking next door neighbor became the number one flyweight in the world, you know what I'd do? I'd fucking walk past the cunt. Derek, how you doing, bro? I was physically burning. Blood. I disagree. First time I hear the song, man, it was fucking badass. Vamos a Argentina, la concha de su madre. I see the bomb in them. I get home and she's like, what the fuck? Me and the kid are here. Why don't you get home and talk to us? I'm like, man, you guys don't know shit about bots. Kel, how does it feel to be the new IVF champion? It feels great. It feels great. Do we really dive into the black hole right off the jump? I think he's hiding glass. Just to play devil's advocate. You want one portion of crow or two portions of crow? Give me uh, two portions with a super-sized fries and, um, and a large drink, please. I can't stand him while I'm Scottish. Cringe sight. But you won't crush Anthony fucking fat-ass Joshua, would you? He's not fat. Yeah, How about man. you tell us what you weighed for your final thoughts? <laughs> My weight? Thank you for listening to the Boxing Coalition. We are live every Monday, 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. UK time, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern.